Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2015 Military Championships here from the Orleans Hotel, Casino, and Bowling Center. I'm Mike Flanagan from InsideBowling.com and Storm Products, here to bring you all the coverage here over the next three days from the Orleans. Active duty military, and I'm really excited to be here. I've heard a lot about the military championships been going on for a long, long time now, and uh, today the coverage is going to be really exciting for me to be able to hear some of the stories from active duty officers uh, and military personnel. Um, I'll be bringing you the action. Wes Pyle will also be joining me today, and Tim Mack will also be uh, laneside reporting as well, talking to a lot of the folks that are bowling. It's been a really, really busy uh, event here so far. I got here yesterday, and uh, we had a pack sweeper here uh, at the Orleans, and this is only half of the story. The other half of the story is over at the Gold Coast, which is also packed for five days of bowling. Uh, there's also a poker tournament this year. It's more like the military games, and I know Brad Edelman and his team has a lot of big things planned. This morning is opening ceremonies here from New Orleans. Uh, here in just a little bit, we're going to get started. Uh, Bob Hart will be the master of ceremonies. Uh, we're going to have a first ball throw out here in just a, a little bit. And uh, just wanted to come on and let everybody know just a little bit about the military uh, championships for active and, and uh, folks that have uh, participated in the military. Uh, Brad Edelman's been putting this on for many, many years. Storm, one of the great sponsors of this event. Uh, we'll be going over all of the sponsors, but Storm, really the main sponsor. Turbo, uh, Jim Beam, Budweiser, many, many sponsors here to thank. Uh, we'll be thanking them all day today, tomorrow, and Wednesday with continuing coverage. So with no further ado, I'm just going to take you over to the floor. And in just a little bit, uh, we'll get started with uh, our opening ceremonies. Happy to be bringing you the coverage here today and look forward to a couple of great days of bowling here coming up. Well, we'd like to welcome you all to, and it's great to see you back, and a very special hello to those of you who are first-timers here with us this year. So it's great to see first-timers experiencing something like this, and uh, we'd like to welcome you. My name is Wendy McPherson. I have, I have been an employee of the High Roller, Brad's been my boss for 25 years. I'm honored to say that. I have absolutely loved my job, loved being part of the High Roller. And I am serving this year as your tournament director here in the Active Duty Vets Division. So I'd like to say thank you to all of you. This is our 11th year with an incredible event. And we have been coming here um, longer than that. Anyone here today, has anyone been here longer than the 11 years that the High Roller has been running this event? Anyone? I see someone down here. It's pretty awesome. A little bit of history. This event actually started back in 1958 at the Nellis Air Force Base where the single, singles winner won a bowling ball. That's all he wanted, a bowling ball. Manhattan rubber, I guess. It couldn't have been a storm because Bob Hart was just a kid. In fact, Bob Hart, who has also been with us every year, is a USBC Hall of Famer. He's a former gold glove boxer. And most importantly, he's a retired U.S. Marine. Oh, we would like to welcome and please welcome a member of Storm staff, Mr. Bob Hart. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy's also, uh, she's very humble. She's also a 31-time national champion, including international over in Japan, also a member of the Hall of Fame, and one all-time great female bowlers herself so and I thank you Wendy and thank you for having me here it's a pleasure um, I'll share a little trivia with you in 1958 I was a young marine stationed at 29 Palms 
and bowled in the first military tournament at Nellis Air Force Base in 1958. Unfortunately, I didn't do well because we weren't manufacturing storm bowling balls yet. <laughs> but every year we're asked many times and every week many times to sponsor events. We sponsored 385 events around the world last year. And we look very carefully at our sponsorships. And I will tell you, the military tournament is our number one. We love coming here. We love the people we're dealing with. And uh, as long as I'm able, I'll be representing Storm at the military tournaments. So I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank our comrades around the world that are serving at this time, make it possible for us to live the way we do here in the United States. Thank you very much. Have fun and bowl good. Bowl up a storm. Thanks, Wendy. Bob, are you bowling this year? Over at Gold Coast. Oh, not this year. Okay. Okay. In the summer. Okay. Our thoughts and prayers always are with the armed forces and their families at home and overseas. Join us for a moment of silence to honor our fallen troops and to pray for the safe return of all others serving our great country. At this time, a moment of silence, please. And speaking of tradition, this incredible choir joins us every year for the opening ceremonies at the Gold Coast. But we thought we would switch them up from the, to the Orleans this year and give you a special treat. We'd like to please welcome the Faith Lutheran High School Women's Ensemble, led by Choir Director Sandra Umis. Welcome.
Absolutely incredible. That was sure was a treat, and I really enjoyed that. And thank you, thank you. A couple of notes about this week's festivities. Randy Peterson will be the master, is the master of ceremonies over at the Gold Coast, but he'll be here tomorrow. We get to have him all day long. Probably that's as much as we want to have him is just one day, and then we need to kick him out of here. But you're in for a real treat tomorrow with Randy. Okay, at this time, we are so proud and honored as we have one of our bowlers to throw out the first ball in this week's festivities. This very brave lady, recently back from her tour and duty in Afghanistan, is also bowling this week in the first all-female storm high rolling ladies representing Navy please welcome Debbie Simon up to first Debbie come on up here to lane 21 this is Debbie Simon they're gonna be on 37 and 38 today correct Debbie real quick please let us know a little bit about your service and about your bowling Good morning. Welcome. I'm Senior Chief Simon from, Debbie Simon, uh, from First MLG in Camp Pendleton, serving over there with the Marines, so I'm proud to be there <laughs> as a corpsman. Um, my bowling, actually I've been bowling all my life, just off and on, so it's more uh, just a fun thing I'm doing. I get, I've been able to bowl on the Navy team, so that was fun for me. And now I'm here with you guys. So. I personally want to say thank you so much for the support of everybody in the past that you've served, when you served, and for those who are serving now. So thank you for this honor. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. And down here on lane 20, we're going to have Debbie throw out the first ball for us this morning. Keep it on the lane. It's a good thing Randy wasn't here, or he would be at ya. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, Debbie. Yeah, Brooklyn. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I wonder how many people have struck on the first ball thrown out. That was great, Debbie. Good shot. Again, as Deb Debbie said, and we say at High Roller, we'd like to thank each and every one of you f for your services um, and those that are still serving, past and present. And uh, I, myself, Brad, we'd like to say thank you very much. Again, thank you for this great attendance. 84, 85 teams we had in the active duty division, vets division this year. I think it's pretty awesome, and it's my absolute pleasure to be here and part of this great year this year. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Mike Flanagan, Tim Mack here with you. We just got done seeing the opening ceremonies. Pretty cool, Tim. Pretty moving, I gotta be honest with you. Every time I've come to Las Vegas, uh, when I bowl the, the events in the past, all the high roller events, I've always enjoyed listening to the national anthem. I think it's something special. Uh, all the athletics uh, all that I've done over my career, the national anthem always means something really special to me. And uh, to listen to that choir sing was, uh, I, 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 you know, the air stood up on my arms, to be honest with you. That, that it was really, really, really impressive. Yeah, me too. And, and just knowing that all of the folks in, in the building here have, have served for our country and are currently actively serving for our country makes it even that much more special. But, hey, we've got an 8 a.m. squad here <laughs> getting underway right out in front of us. We'll take you out to the lanes, lanes 17 and 18. 19 and 20, Tim, and what we have going on here is a full bowling center uh, of active military personnel bowling in teams, and they're 6-2 a pair, and they're bowling as a team on a pair of lanes, and they stay on the same lanes. They're going to bowl four games in total, and uh, quite a group here we have for sure. Well, the guy that just watched, that you just watched, so a strike, Timothy Banks. I think he's from the North Carolina area, if, I, if my memory serves me right. Uh, he's a really accomplished bowler. He's a heck of a player. Um, you know, I've seen him. I've seen him uh, do really good in some uh, 
events, you know, the Masters and even also, uh, I think he was a PBA member. I'm not sure if he was was or, or is or still isn't, but, uh, you know, to be active duty and in the military and, and uh, you know, to still be able to come out here and compete compete is impressive. He, he, he's a guy to watch, and I've seen some familiar faces over here uh, that I've seen at some, uh, some really big tournaments. I know the Air Force team over on 13 and 14, which you can't see, I watched their practice session, and they threw like a 65-bagger of the team. So I'm probably happy that they're active right now so they're not coming in and bowling tournaments and beating us. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you. So this is you. We're going to see. Some, I think we're going to see some some great scores. Uh, I flew in last night. Uh, it's first opportunity to first finally work this military event. I'm excited to be here this week on behalf of Storm, uh, you know, and our, our whole family up in Utah to be able to bring this to you and work with the uh, the guru when it comes to uh, showcasing bowling to to people, uh, whether they're in their cars on their mobile devices, sitting on their couch. Uh, in their business office, Mike Flanagan, here we are. Yeah, buddy. Uh, pretty cool. Always special to come to the Orleans. You know, team trials just uh, concluded here a couple of weeks ago in this building. Bowl TV sat in this very spot and brought you the finals of that. Cameron Doyle uh, went on to win in the, in the men's division. 16 years old. 16 years old. And, uh, and then also over on the women's side, uh, Shanna Plahowski uh, got it done. Marshall and Danielle led. And... Uh, Neither one could get it done in the title match, but hey, made Team USA, really great story. Uh, so a lot of uh, patriotism here, very patriotic bowling center to start out 2015 with the Team USA trials and now the military championships. Uh, just checking in on the chat and uh, a couple people saying hello. Uh, my good, our good buddy, Mike Sinek, who uh, handles so many things uh, on our staff responsibilities on the storm side and the roto side. Uh, Mike, nice to see you in the chat early. Uh, I had a great opportunity uh, to do uh, the Wounded Warriors event with uh, uh, in his area, in the Maryland area. And uh, I'll tell you what, what a, what a moving event. It, it, it puts things in perspective and um, really uh, you know, to see what, you know, what, what our uh, military has gone through, uh, active and, and obviously the, the non-active. Uh, in the people that the passion that they have just uh, for our freedom is, is, is pretty special and to be a, be, be a part of that event was uh, was one of the best things I've done in a long 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 time so it's nice to see Mike out here uh, on, on the chat we're going to see some good bowling here no doubt um, I'd expect some really good scores I got off the plane and I, I saw the sweeper scores the other night and I was oh my god <laughs> 1040 won the sweeper so 10:40 for four games. Four games, yeah. So we're talking about some people that are going to go out here and strike today, and I would, I would anticipate a really good scoring pace. It doesn't look like a really uh, difficult hard lane condition. It looks like a really good scoring environment, and you know what? Active military deserves that. You know, they they they, they work hard. They're away from their families, you know, and uh, they're passionate about what they do, and they come out here, and you know, here they are. Uh, Supporting a huge event. I think we have 85 teams uh, today. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe you can el yeah, we, elaborate on the numbers. Well, we've, we've got this team event now at, at 8 a.m., the early squad. Then we got another one that comes back at noon and participates again. And then we've got another one at 4 o'clock. So three squads today of team bowling. What we're going to do, too, uh, just for you viewers at home, and uh, uh, I'm going to be roaming the floor here in a little bit. I, I want to let the bowlers get their feet wet and Try to grab some people, or grab some, some some people for some interviews, and uh, you know, let let them talk about their personal story and you know how much they've been bowling and you know maybe where they where they were stationed. You know, I've had the I've been fortunate to travel around the world and and do some work at some of the, some bases around the world. And uh, anytime I get a chance to see our, our our military, whether it's in England, Germany, you know, Korea. Uh, anywhere around the world, uh, they're, they always welcome us with open arms and they're always happy to see an American face. Yeah, you've done a lot of traveling. You know, I've, I've only been to Canada, buddy, and I've, I haven't done the traveling that you have, but I know that that just it's kind of like someone that, that doesn't have kids, not understanding what it's like to be a parent. Um, just going and being around the things that you've been around. I'm looking forward to hearing some things from you as well. Um, that you've seen, you know, as, as you've gone out to these different events and traveled the world and 
Uh, things are different in different parts of the world. We've got it good here. Yeah, people don't realize, uh, I think, sometimes how how good we have it. Uh, you know, it's it's the old adage, out of sight, out of mind, Mike. And, and, and people, sometimes they lose fact and lose sight of how good. Well, I mean, we live in the greatest country in the world. And, uh, you know, the reason, the, re the reason being is because of the people that you're watching in front of you bowl. You know, our military protects us. And, um, you know, we just have so many things that uh, you know other countries don't have. We're, we're, we're just afforded the best of the best, and sometimes you know you have to be thankful for what you have. Uh, and, and I think we lose sight of that a lot of times in, in this country. And I've traveled to some places that where people just happen to get a glass of water, clean water, you know, things that we take for granted, you know, or, or electricity, or or you know, or. You know, a, a good hot meal or, 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 you know, how about a shower, you know? Um, so, but we have these people in front of us to thank. And, uh, you know, the world's brought me a, a great perspective on, uh, you know, and, and it's all because of bowling. And in a roundabout way, Mike, it's actually all because of uh, two people, actually. Uh, Corbett Austin, our operations manager at Storm, took a chance on me. I'm... On my 20th anniversary, this is my 20th year with Storm Bowling Products. 20 uh, years. 20, 20 years in June, and uh, I'm excited about that. And uh, Corbett Austin took a chance on a young, brash kid out of uh, Pennsylvania, played football Penn State, and gave me an electrical storm and said, go have at it. Then uh, I became uh, personal friends uh, with the owner, who uh, Bill Crispin, who's had this an incredible vision to build uh, this empire uh, with just amazing employees, amazing staff, uh, surrounded around a man and, a and Barbara, his wife, a woman, who've had a vision to change bowling. And if you don't think they've changed bowling, then you don't know bowling. They're the most passionate, most uh, forgiving, and uh, most uh, competitive uh, nurturing people that I met, uh, you know, in, in the industry, and uh, I'm really blessed to be part of it. So, and they've given me the opportunity to see around, you know, to, to travel around the world when, when the rest of the world wasn't really bowling a lot around sure. the world. You know, I, I, I uh, you know, our market for Storm wasn't as big uh, here in the United States yet, and we built a, a great reputation internationally in Asia, and in Europe, and uh, in the Middle East and worldwide, and I was able to help uh, help that that cause but well, I was I was able to do that because I was afforded that opportunity from from Bill Crispin we sat in a hotel room in Samstown in 1996 and hashed out a deal is pretty neat well uh, you loaded loaded stuff there Tim but if anybody's just joining us game number one four games six on a pair they're bowling as a team on the pair 2015 military championships brought to you by storm Tim Mack Mike Flanagan here with you just got done with opening ceremonies underway game number one and you talked a little bit about storm and 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 where storm has come from and you and i both work for the great company 20 years uh i'm celebrating really close to two years uh and i was over at the gold coast last night for a little bit i actually was behind the counter collecting sheets and spending some time over there and i was speaking with the gentleman over there named chris who was working the counter and chris said to me he goes you work at storm i said yeah chris i work at storm he says, uh, I just want you to know I'm from the Northeast. Working the counter now. I said, okay. He said, uh, when Storm first came out, I was one of the first people that gave Storm a shot up in the Northeast. And I used to bowl, and people look at me and say, what is that you're throwing? What is Storm? What is that? And that really made me take a minute and close my eyes and think back. You know, me only being with the company for two years, but being a bowler my whole life. And, I, you know, I remember when the teal storm and, and balls like that came out, and I had one, you know. I was a bowling ball junkie back then as a youth <laughs> bowler, you know. But just to think that to take something from nothing to what it has become, to become the number one brand in bowling as far as bowling equipment is concerned and involved with so many different great events, uh, it, it is very, very humbling and speaks to exactly what you said. 
And you mentioned something about Samstown just a little while ago. And uh, Tim, I don't think it's called Samstown, is it? It's, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> I believe it's uh, got a different name. Uh, as you told me before, it's Timstown. Well, <laughs> Timstown. And I love I love saying that because you get such a chuckle whenever <laughs> whenever whenever you say that. <laughs> From about uh, 1998 to 2003, when I was really healthy and things were going good, uh, you know, we we had a couple of events over there. Um, and uh, for some reason, you know, as a bowler, you know, I bowled for a living for quite a long time. And uh, some bowling centers just match up to match up to your ball roll, your your your, your ball reaction. Uh-huh. And uh, I had a lot of successful tournaments in that place. So I just renamed it Timstown. Because right, Timstown. If every tournament was, if the World Series of Bowling was at Timstown, <laughs> I'd be bowling for a living again because Jason Belmonte wouldn't beat me there. Hey, everybody, this Maybe. guy right nah, here, nah, he, he, he would be, he would be a factor at at Samstown because it's Timstown. That's right. Nah, Jason's still the best. I he'd still get me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd I'd give those guys a run for their money. And and to be quite honest with you, I had so many great things. Uh, in my life happened there personally. Uh, had you know, first my first date with my uh, my, my wife now and and uh, you had your first date with Brenda. At, well, first, at first time Samstown? we got together was in Samstown in 1998. <laughs> oh my goodness! But my first date was actually at Boulder Station down the street at Pasta Pasta, Pasta Palace. So uh, yeah, got to give a shout out to Mike Sargent working hard back at the home office. Love me, love Mike Sargent joining us this morning. You got any questions about technical issues? Feel free to call store uh, call, call call the number. <laughs> yeah, Mike I'm Sargent sure. will handle I'm everything you everything and then some at the yes, tech department there. Yes, he will. Just had his uh, tonsils taken out too, and uh, as you get older, doing something like that is uh, quite painful. But he's uh, he's made it through it and uh, took it like a champ, doing well here. Uh, what, and and I love I love Mike Sargent, great guy, awesome working with him. Just opened a pro shop uh, in Ogden, also. So good luck to Mike at Sargent's Bowling. Uh, I think it's Sergeant's Bowling Supply, Sergeant's Is Bowling. It? Oh boy, uh, Sergeant's Bowling. I'm gonna go back to the tonsils. Okay. That means you can have whatever, as much ice cream as you can. So, in honor of Mike Sergeant getting his tonsils out today, I'm gonna have some ice cream today for you, Mike. Because I like and ice it. cream gets me sick because I don't have a gallbladder anymore, but I'm going to have one. Sergeant's Bowling Services is the correct answer for 200, Alex. And, uh, you know, there is a Baskin-Robbins here at this wonderful facility called the Orleans. And how great is it of the Orleans and uh, Gold Coast to be a part of this uh, this event and want to even host it? It's fantastic. This, has been, this event uh, here at the Orleans is a special me uh, meaning to me. I've had a lot of... Uh, a lot of great memories in this building over over the years, uh, with all the mega bucks that we bowled over the years. I finished second in the eliminator a couple years back in this in this in this very same building, and uh, it's just been a great host of bowling and, and bowlers and events. People a little excited about the solid eight there on lane 20. You saw that on our camera. Well, he deserved that after tripping the one. And tripping the one, there you go. You can you can hear a little bit of the banter in the background, but uh, the staff here at the Orleans and the Gold Coast, really supportive of bowling. And uh, the turnout is great, and it's, it, it, it's a great place to come. So if you're looking for a place to come stay in Vegas and do a little bit of bowling and have some really good food and some ice cream after that, after that food and have a nice day, the Orleans and Gold Coast, put those on your list. Hey, Brandon Buck Bushrod here up on uh, lane 18 has got nine spare triple. And Russell Monroe, nine spare strike, open nine spare up on 17 right now. You know, a lot of good form. There's a good shot right there. A lot of good bowlers here. I think we're going to see 300 today. I really do. I think we're going to see. There's four in a row. There's four in a row. Now, is that a hand bone or a four bagger? I don't know. Let's call Rob and ask him. Actually, Randy could probably attest. He probably would. Rob, when Randy Peterson's at the booth, PBA Hall of Famer, voice of the the PBA and the ESPN. Uh, Randy Peterson is going to be joining us here in the next couple of days. I don't know if he comes in today, but he'll definitely be on the broadcast. Yeah, no, I think I think he's coming Wednesday, but the, the schedule could get adjusted. Just stay tuned and, and continue to watch. And now here's here's Robert Walters. Robert's a great guy. Known Robert for a little bit. He's you know he's out there just giving it giving it a go. And fifth uh, frame, looking for his first strike. He's got it. Yep. He's going to be like, you know what, I just need I need you guys to talk about me more. It just needs to maybe loosen up a little bit. Looks a little stiff. 
And there's a strike for Darren over on 19. We've got the front six over there on 11, 11 and 12, the top bowler at 11 and 12, RV. I don't know who that is, but. Uh, and we got the front five from uh, Josh Chambliss. Uh, I think he's from Kansas. He's a very accomplished bowler on lane 13. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. And if they get uh, around eight or nine, I'll send you down with the sure. wireless. Take sure. Take the down with the camera. So. Just getting started here, though, early this morning. We got three squads today, three squads tomorrow, three squads on Wednesday. We'll continue to dial in our coverage as we just got set up here at the Orleans. You know, another thing, I was talking to Brad Edelman, who, uh, you know, is in charge of this whole great event. He's the commissioner, so to speak, as I like to call him. 30 employees working this thing. Could you imagine? I mean, 30, 30 jobs in bowling for running this tournament. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it tells you how big it, how big it's there's, become. There's a lot of 24, 32 lane bowling centers that don't have 30 employees that oh. work in the bowling center. Yeah, so that just tells you how big the event has become, and and, and uh, how and how serious Brad takes it, providing the best service possible for everyone. Yeah, I mean, I think it gets better and better every year. I mean, how many, how many people run tournaments and they're like, oh yeah, one guy for the brackets, one guy check people in, oh, and I'll make the announcements, and and then he, you know. Then wanting to have us here to live stream it it's so nice. people can see it, you it's know, nice. even better. It's nice. It's a, it's a win-win for everybody. And Mike Kaufman here at the Orleans is always so good to us. Gives us a little riser here. Gives us uh, stanchions to sure. give us a little privacy here. You know, it's beautiful. I mean, I really couldn't be any happier today than to be bringing the world coverage of our military personnel out here having a good time when they're not defending our country right now. Yeah, if anybody deserves a good time, it's them. They put the time in, and, and, and they put the effort in to, to give us the way of life we have. So if anybody deserves it, it's the people that you're watching right in front of you. So the next time you see some military, you're going to shake their hand or just say thank you. You know, one yeah. of my favorite things that, I, that I've seen on, on Facebook and things like that, social media, is these people that have a first-class ticket on an airplane, and then they see somebody come in in their gear, military personnel, Get and they're like, and hey, out. why don't you sit here? I'll take your seat. I mean, <laughs> you know, there should be a lot more of that, buddy. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with you, buddy. I agree with you 100%. 100%. If I had a first-class seat, I would have I I would have done it, but six uh, six E right in the middle wasn't really a first class. No. no. Six, six E. No. But oh, I will I say this. I will be... After our uh, broadcast is done today, I am going to see the great movie American Sniper, which has gotten such great rave, rave reviews. When are you doing that? I'm going tonight. Josh just threw another strike. He's got the front six over there. Yeah, he he's, does. A, he's a heck of a bowler, guys. And uh, I want to say he's I want to say he's from Kansas. I'm not sure. I'm gonna check. Let's see, I'm gonna do some investigative reporting. See if I can find out where Josh is from. Game number one, four games here on this 8 a.m. squad here at the Military Championships here from the Orleans Hotel, Casino, and Bowling Center. Mike Flanagan, Tim Mack with you, bringing you the coverage. We're in the sixth frame of game number one. Looking at lanes 17 and 18, lanes 19 and 20. Active duty military personnel in the house. Full house here this morning. More squads to come. A lot of good bowlers. Give a rundown of the sponsors here. Storm, of course, is the major title sponsor. Storm, uh, the bowler's company. If you are looking for a new bowling ball, you should head over to stormbowling.com and check out the products that are available. The largest and widest variety of high-performance bowling balls on the market today. The choice of many of the pros out there and a great start to 2015 in all events with Storm Bowling products. Uh, just couldn't be happier uh, with the results of the products and how great they are. Also got to thank Turbo. Chris Sand is here in the building. Turbo also a great sponsor of this event. Counts Customs here from Las Vegas. You can see their TV show. Bowler's Journal International, Enterprise, Rent-A-Car, Jim Beam, Budweiser, and Edelman Financial Services brings you and makes this possible. Tim, what do you say? Um, I give you a crash course here. On, uh, on this, on this uh, wirecast, and I'll go do some camera work. Okay. 
Okay, so training on the fly here, folks. So what you would do here is, uh, is for instance, if you wanted to bring up this camera, this is your preview screen. Yeah. Okay. That's the camera in front of us. Right. So you would just click that button right here. Okay. And it brings it over. Right. Now, in order to bring up the bowling again, you click on that, and then you bring it over. Right. Now, what gets the auxiliary camera on? That's that one right there. Okay. Which okay. is down, which is off right now. Right. But I'm going to turn it on now. Okay. And we'll, and we'll do a test with it. And okay. I'll let you drive the, the machine, and I'll go get bonus coverage of, uh, of some of these guys over here bowling. Okay. You don't need the, the earpiece then? We'll just... I'll put the earpiece in okay, and grab the, I'll grab the wireless mic. So a okay. uh, little bit of uh, dialing in our coverage here this morning. Always fun to train oh. on the go. I think we're going to go take a look at Josh Cham uh, Joshua Chambliss, who has got the front six strikes. Working on number seven, Arkansas. Oh, I was close. Yeah, thanks, Brad. Brad858. Josh is from Arkansas. Well, there you go. All I know is he's got the front seven, and he's a heck of a bowler because I've seen him before. All right. I'm going to come into you. Uh, let's see if we can get the camera sorted out here. Okay. We got this one. We're going to let you watch the bowling still here, and uh, I'm going to get... Mr. Flanagan, he's like my Miyagi. I'm Danielson from Karate Kid, and, and, and Mike Flanagan is Miyagi. So if anybody's seen the Karate Kid, the original Karate Kid, where, you know, the good one, whether Elizabeth Shue, you know, the girlfriend, the whole deal, I am now calling Mike Flanagan Miyagi. Buddy, you just said Elizabeth Shue. Yes, that who's, is who my daughter's middle name is named after. Oh, my goodness gracious. She is... Uh, well, you and I have more in common. All right, so... Okay, so now we're going to throw it out to... Yep. That's how you do here. it right there, here buddy. Here we go, and we got uh, myself and all my hair. And uh, Mr. Flanagan is now going to pan around. He's giving a little panoramic view of our, our setup here. And uh, he's got the mic on him. And we're going we're, we're to stay on this camera for a little bit. Okay, so let's go to let's go back out to the lanes and let me get down there and get set. And then, oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want that one, buddy. No, we probably don't want that one. We want this one. Is the one there you want. go. Okay. So, Mike's gonna take a take a walk down the lanes, and when he gets set, he's gonna give me the cue. He's he's starting to zoom in on. Uh, he's gonna give me the cue, and we're gonna we're gonna take it down there now, because. Uh, Whoops, I got the wrong camera there. Let's try it again. There we go. Josh Chambliss now is about to go for the front eight strikes. And uh, Mike Flanagan's down there in the set tee with the camera. And here's a great look at Josh. He's bowling on lean 14 until his teammate got in the way. And there it is, the front eight. Brad, I won't, uh, I won't let Mike know, and I, 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 Mike can hear me right now, but it says, uh, Mike, he says, don't show Josh if you brought the Holiday Doubles Black Cloud with you. So Yeah, I wasn't at Holiday Doubles, buddy. That's right, and, and, and the bottom line is is that uh, you, did, uh, you did just get the camera on him, and he did throw the eighth strike, so there's no Black Cloud there. Yes, he did. So we're, we're, we're still on you. We're staying on you live down in the set team. Mike's with the, looks like the Air Force team here on 13 and 14, and they've got a slew of strikes up there. Uh, they've got one, two, three, five of their six guys are actually working on uh, all, all doubles. A lot of high-fiving going on down there, and uh, they only got really one guy that uh, seems to be struggling a little bit out of the gate, but um, maybe he, he can uh, rally the troops with his team here and... Uh, and that's what it's all about. You know, the military is really good about camaraderie and rally, rallying. And let's see if uh, Rob Collins, here it is, a little fist pump, and uh, maybe the rally cap is coming on. Yeah, these guys are lighting it up, and they've got, looks like they got eagles on. Almost looks like they're ready for the USBC Open Championship. I was just here. about to say that. It's funny you mention that. Are you sure we're not related? Oh, and the solid nine on a, on a four-bagger from, looks like Stephen McCullough. These guys could compete in the World Team Challenges, it looks like, from back in the 90s. These guys, uh, they, they, they're full throttle right now. Now we're going to, 
Try to keep the camera on Josh. He's on lane 13. He has the front eight strikes, guys. And, Bidding uh, for nine in a row. Nine in a row. Josh Chambliss from Arkansas. Does he have another? Oh, he didn't like it. But the team liked it, and the result was good. I'll tell you what, I, I'm pretty pumped up just even watching this. I'll tell you, I, you know, <clears throat> I won't say that I, I thought we'd see 300, but I, didn't, I certainly didn't see, think we'd see it the first game. So good thing is, is when he throws all three down there, <clears throat> you'll be able to interview him. And I'm going to stay on this pair, Mike. I, I mean, these guys are striking, and, and, and uh, you're down there, and all this gym work that you've been doing back in Utah to hold that camera steady and still uh, is coming into play right now, and it's really coming. Oh, we got a balk. That's the Arkansas windmill, I guess. Was that, <laughs> was that Sean Rash, Chuck, or, Chuck or, 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 or Chris Barnes, or who was that? Those guys balked the most. But you know what? If I was as good as those guys, I'd probably balk too. Man, these guys are just killing it down here, Timmy. Who's that? Bri What's his name? Brian Doan, it looks like. He's on 260. Chuck's on 260. You know, the other two guys are going 220, 230. And then you got Josh, who has a potential 300. Some really, really big scores. We're here, yeah, we're here live, guys, at the military tournament. Game one of a three game, a three, a three squad block today of the, of the team event. Let's take you through this here real quick. Chuck here has just one miss, and it was in the fifth frame. He has an open. Everything else is strikes. Sam on lane 14, who just got the strike, can shoot 234. That's the first shot and a tenth for him. That's a triple. Pretty good bowling down here on 13 and 14. Yeah, they're, stri they're striking a fair bit right now. You get 230 and 260 up top. Some good scores out of the gate here out of the morning as I, as I look around. It's 250s out here. You got 270 right next door on 11 and 12. It's like a Matt Tillmore, I think the name is. 268 maybe. Chuck Buschert now six in a row. That was his 11th shot. If he fills it up, it'll be 265 for Chuck. Other than the hiccup in the fifth frame, that's 11 out of 12. That's pretty impressive. They really got it going on down there. Looks like, you know what? They got some good team chemistry and some camaraderie going on down there. And I, I just like how they're all matching, too. They, they, they got the memo or the email or the group text that said, hey. Jim Harbaugh khakis. Black shirts. And the khakis. And the Jim Harbaugh khakis. Look at that messenger. Flying messenger. It's a nice solid 265 start. So they're going to have 499 for their top two bowlers. It's impressive. Oh, did you see that nine yes, fall I forward? <laughs> well, I can't. I, I don't want to talk about pins falling forward in this joint. I'll tell you about that later. That's how I lost the eliminator. Wow! Oh, the, the squasher right on top of him. Stephen looks like he's a he's an aggressive kind of fellow. He doesn't leave anything in the bag. He threw the first strike. He smacked it out. And, at 8.07 this morning. Hey, Timmy, will you uh, will you take them back over to 17 through 20 real quick while I, uh, I'm going to sure. get a different angle for this 10th sure uh, frame? Sure will. We're going to go, switch the camera, go back to 17 to 20, and we're good. Okay. And just like that, guys, Rob Collins has picked up his, du his first double, and it looks like a little momentum of the team carrying him here to the end. We've got um, Josh Chambliss, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and everybody that's watching at home on 13 and 14, plays the front nine strikes. Miyagi, Mr. Mike Flanagan, has now made, him, made himself into the set tee. And is, uh, we're going to go bring this 10th frame to you from right in the trenches. 
for a possible 300 first game of the tournament, which would be great, which would be wonderful to see. Melanie Griffith, and it's not the actress, has a nice 247 out there right in front of you. Uh, just finishing up on lane 20. And Brandon Bushrod is going to bowl, has a potential 237 here right in front of us. Okay, we're going to send it back down to Mike, who's down in the settee. I think he's got a new angle out, and uh, we're, we're going to Bring, 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 bring you back down to. Uh, I'm ready for you, buddy. Down on the set tee here, if I can get, get get this sorted up, and there we go. Okay, we're on 13 and 14, and we're watching Rob Collins finishing up his 10th frame. Now he's going to be low on the pair, but what a great finish here! He's got a triple, looking for four in a row. Fantastic, you know, like I said, is it just camaraderie, team? Lined him up, got him back in the ball game. It didn't look like he, he wasn't lined up, Mike. It looked more like he just had a couple of issues with some spares early. As you can see, he missed a couple spares early, but finished really strong. And uh, you see Brian missing the 10th frame here. Left the dreaded 3-6-9-10 split, we call that in bowling, because it's the hardest spare in bowling. So here we are, Timmy. 10th frame, Joshua Chambliss opening game here at the Military Championships. Active duty officers here looking for 10 in a row. It's got a hook. Oh, he's it got does. it. 10 in a row. Josh Chambliss from Arkansas. Josh is not, let's just, let's put it to you this way, guys. This isn't Josh's first rodeo. Uh, he's bowled some big numbers. Uh, and uh, when you're comfortable and confident, you create area on the lane. And you can see he's got a little left and a little right. Going for number 11, let's just, as Jim Nance would say, let's watch it play out. And there's number 11. Doesn't get any better than that, Timmy. Yeah, that was, that was, one, of, that was one of his best ones in the last four or five. He caught a couple lucky ones coming down here, ones that he didn't like off his hand. But that clearly there was the best one he threw in the last four or five shots. So, uh crowd gathering behind you, Mike. Some people behind you, and uh, I'm going to let the, the people watch it. Here he goes. Josh Chambliss looking for 300s at the Military Open Championship. Oh! 299. Comes up a little high, leaves a, chips to four, and leaves a nine. Uh, I don't know what ball that is, uh, Mike, but they're asking on, on, the, on the chat what ball that is. It looks like... Does not look familiar to me. No, I don't know what it is. So the scores down here, 234, 163, 299, 224, 220, 265. Pretty good down here on 13 and 14. Back to 17 through 20. And here we go. We're going to go back up to the... Main, main camera, and you're good, Mike. Thank you. So there you have it, game one, Josh Chambliss, 299. And th that team just bowled 1,400. They bowled 709 and 696, and they bowled the 696 with a 163 game. So that's impressive. Some really, really good scores early out of the gate. Pretty and, phenomenal, buddy. Yeah, and uh, we're going to have Mike join us back up in, here, in the booth here in a minute, but uh, got to thank Miyagi for going down and give us, giving us that, uh, that view. I think uh, what we'd like to do is we're going to get him on an uh, the live feed and probably bring him over here so we can get him on an interview. I think, I think Josh went to go check his brackets or something. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I like his chances of getting, getting through them all. <laughs> we, what we might want to do is in between games, I don't, I don't know if we can get him up in the booth really quick, but uh, we might want to bring him up in the booth here. And in this tournament, they stay on all three games, on the same pair for all three games. So you're going to see uh, same players in front of you. But uh, we've got some really good scores already out of the gate, and everything kind of happened right in front of us, which was nice. It was really close. Yeah, it was. It did work out that yeah, way. 
worked out really good for us. So when, when you're uh, hunting down Josh, in the meantime, we're just going to keep uh, we'll keep the main feed here. We'll just keep rolling. Keep rolling with our two pairs here. Game number two, 8 a.m. squad here at the 2015 Military Championships. Here at the Orleans, Tim Mack, Mike Flanagan here with you. We, got, uh, we, 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 we had a, a shout out again from uh, Mr. Sargent back at home office. And uh, yeah, he loves, me. he loves him some left-handed bowling. Well, Timothy Banks is right on your screen, right in front of you for some left-handed bowling, Mr. Sargent. And here comes Josh Chambliss. Tim's a good bowler. I'm just going to shake his hand real quick. No, no. He's up here. He, he's uh, Josh is just saying that uh, he didn't want to be black cloud. Mr. Flanagan's against huh? a black cloud. I'm lucky I got more than six on that shot. Though. Buddy, we want to get we, we want to have Mike uh, uh, say some words for you real quick on camera if you don't mind. Okay. Real quick. Let's uh. Let's see if we, can. let's let's see if we can't figure something out here. Yep. Let's see what we can do. Hold on. Let's uh, let's tilt it up a little bit, and I'll hold it up here. And here we go. Okay, here, are, here we are, right here, 299. We, we captured it all, Josh. Uh, well, what's going on down there? Uh, well, the last shot, I just a uh, little nerves. You know, it's fun to get out here. It's my first time. Um, I'm actually sharing a ball with a teammate, which is kind of funny. He brought it. The first time I threw it was yesterday. It's a uh, motive tribal fire, and I, I think it's going pretty good so far. Uh, I'm going to try to just keep making good shots, having fun so far for sure. Yeah, man, you said uh, you said not to black cloud you. Um, I guess the black cloud's really getting around these days, huh? I'm trying to help you out. You know, I really try to watch as many shows as I can. Um, when I'm at the house, I'll, I'll connect it to the TV and watch. It's a lot of fun, and you're all doing great things, and we really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate all you do for this country, man, and just being part of this event. We're just happy to bring, be here bringing it to you. Awesome. Thanks for being here. I'm going to go try to get another strike now. All good, right. Good luck, Josh. He's still got eight ninety nine left, Timmy. Yeah, and back to the main, main, main view we go. That's... Uh, Fantastic. Well, there you have it. There was the question uh, Brad asked what ball he's using. I think if you listen, he just told you what ball he's using. He said it was a motive tribal fire. That's what he said. So, and he's using his teammate's ball, which is kind of funny. Yeah, you know, that's uh, a bit unusual. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is unusual. But you know, whatever works, works. You got, sometimes you got to improvise here. He got himself another strike. He started the next game off and he perfect again. So I think I think this is 800 coming. I really do. Josh Chambliss, I'm calling it right now. I know it's not a big call because he's got 100 of them already. He's still going to bowl 501 for two. But I think Josh is going to go out and bowl 800. Brandon Bushrod starting with a nice double. He's had a nice, nice 225 game right here in front of us. Timmy, I love working with you, buddy. It's seamless. I love bringing <laughs> coverage with you. We're just totally on the fly. We didn't know what to expect here this morning, but we're, making we're, it all, work. we're all over it. I'm going to call the boss man, Brad Edelman, real quick. I did see that he sent you a message. Uh, yeah, he, he, message, he so. wants a quick phone call, so I'm just going to do that really quick. You call quick. him. I got everything handled here in the booth. You go ahead and do that. So back to the back to our viewers, guys. We're right here. We're, uh, we got a good look at Elmer Sanders. Gets through it really nice at the bottom. Just missed it a little bit left there, and he... Comes up high and leaves a three pin. He's just getting his feet wet. Slow start to first game with 160. And then our good buddy Robert Robert Walters really came on strong at the end of that first game after a slow start. So it looks like he's loosened up a little bit. You know, was able to save 201. And uh, looks like they both threw actually identical shots. Pretty impressive. The balls went through the pins the exact same way and left the exact same pin. When my ball hits there, it's always the 310. Or the three six nine ten, or some friends in the corner. So it's nice when uh, it leaves something you can make. So. That army team has continued to strike over there as they started off good again. They're all clean through the first six frames, and it's just really, really, really cool to be here. Uh, really nice to uh, be part of this event and. Uh, You'll bring this to you guys live. You're watching live from uh, the Orleans in Las Vegas. And what I'd like to call Las Vegas is the home of bowling. You know, there's so many great venues in, the, in this city. 
and uh, you know, it's great to see. So, cities means so much to me personally, and I've had so many good memories here, and hopefully, I'm not done with all those memories and can continue some more. Got some big events coming up, some big tournaments coming up, but uh, they're going to take back seat right now to this big event that we have here, and we'd again like to thank Storm for allowing us to be out here and allowing us to, to bring this to you, this coverage to you, and uh, our industry sponsors that are all, all on board this, this week here, obviously the Orleans and Turbo and Chris Sand and Turbo. Hopefully you, you guys want to check out some great products, Turbo 2-in-1 Grips. Get that good feel on your hand to get that good release. That's what you want to see. Hey, you know what, Tim? Also, uh, earlier when we were going over the sponsors, Storm, Turbo, Counts Customs, Bowlers Journal International, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Jim Beam, Budweiser, Edelman Financial Services. I, uh, I just realized I forgot one of our sponsors. And how can I forget when we're sitting right in front of K&K &K Bowling Services? Some of the best pro shops I've ever Absolutely. seen. And just merchandised well. Great service, K and K. If you're in the Las Vegas area, one of the many great pro shops in our country. But K and K, a great supporter of this event. Yeah, we just actually we gave him a good plug there because the interview had the K and K bowling services sign on the whole time. So, yeah, some good people at K and K, uh, and known those guys for a long time. So, we've got a number of different uh, outfits that are sponsoring this event, and that was where my mistake was. I should have rented from Enterprise Rental Car. I didn't last night, and I sat in line for an hour and a half at the airport. So let that be a lesson to all you people that are coming to Las Vegas in the future. Go get your car from Enterprise Rental Car. Book it online, and they'll take care of you. Speaking of uh, taking care of things, Josh Chambliss has continued his onslaught on lanes 13 and 14 and started with a double. Got a unique, uh, we're set up here, guys, behind 17, 18, 19, 20, and we could pan out to some a couple more pairs. And then we've got our roaming camera that uh, allows us to see, you know, just about whoever we want to see. We can go across the entire bowling center, and uh, we're going to bring you as many personal interviews like we just did with Josh uh, as we can uh, throughout throughout the day. And there's uh, Mr. Sargent's great left hope, Timothy Banks. He's actually saying something uh, on the chat here. We're just going to take a look and see what he says. All right. <laughs> what am I going to? He says, "When am I going to be able to show him how to hook a ball 35 boards sideways in the last five feet of the lane?" And then he mentions Code Black. <laughs> I got to get back out to the training facility, Mike. Get out there and uh, get in home office and uh, see you guys and answer some tech calls with you and talk, you know, get the feet wet in home office in Utah, get the finger on the pulse. It's always nice to get a finger on the pulse out in Utah. Did I just hear you say you were going to start taking some tech calls yeah, with some, Sergeant? Take some tech calls with Sergeant. <laughs> oh, boy. See, see, ask when they ask you why there's why they want – Three ounces aside, 15-3 uh, three, three instead of 15-2. Can you answer that for me, Mike Sargent? Can you ask me why someone wants the 15-3 and not the 15-2? Can you help me out with that? Maybe I can tell our viewers about that. Russell Monroe is uh, right here in front of us on lane 17. Is uh, working on a triple. Going for the, the four-bagger. Well, there you go. People would have to put their CC info in for that tech call. Okay. And Russell Monroe with a nice four-bagger here to start game two. And just so you know, Josh Chambliss, Chambliss, I, I say Chris Chambliss only because I remember the Yan the great Yankee Chris Chambliss who used to used to play first base for the Yankees even though I I'm not a Yankee fan so I don't know if it's Ch Chambliss or Chambliss I'm gonna have to ask Josh in any case he started with the front three game two and uh, doesn't look like he's gonna slow down anytime soon 
Also next to him, B.J. Riley, it looks like, has got 267 with the front three. On lane 12. So the guys are out of here, out of the gate, striking again in game two. I thought the scoring pace would be pretty good. And uh, so far we haven't been disappointed here in game one at the 8 o'clock. 8 a.m. squad, so it's pretty cool. A lot of striking going on, a lot of camaraderie. But what you see is, uh, you see the focus and the concentration level, but what you don't see is any negative, any anything negative, any, it's just everything's positive out here right now. And uh, you know, I think that's a testament to their work ethic and our military's work ethic and how the people carry their lives. It's positivity, nothing but positivity. Scores are picking up on 17 and 18. Yes, they are. Got an opening hand bone. Is it a hand bone? Do, have we decided that that's, that's a hand bone? That's what I call no? it, yeah. Okay. Do we got to call Rob and ask him for permission for that? And we have our answer about the 15 3 and the 15 2. So it's all about feel. If one ounce is lighter or feels better, then that's what you should use. There you go. So if it's a feel thing, you go ahead and take that one ounce lighter or that one ounce heavier. Some people have been known to be able to tell how much top weight and side weight they have in a ball. The great Norm Duke can tell you some amazing things with his hand in the bowling ball. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Russell Monroe right in front of us, starting with the front five. Is he our guy? Is he our guy for game two? And it looks like we're going to... Hey, Timmy, yeah, let's... Uh, we're going to throw it down here to uh, <laughs> an interview. Mike's grabbed this really pretty young lady, and uh, we talked about her in the first game. Mike, take it away. That's right. She's been bowling right in front of us. I'm here with Melanie Griffith. Melanie, uh, how long have you been coming to the military championships? Um, this is my third year here, so... I'm coming from San Diego. I'm in the Navy. I'm on the USS Essex. Um, and I'm actually from here, so it's nice to get to come back and bowl this event. How cool is it to uh, be able to just get a break from what you do all the time and be able to come out here and have some fun? Oh, it's really nice. Um, I mean, in San Diego, I don't get to bowl as much as I like to. So to get to take a whole week off and come here and bowl and see everyone and I get to catch up with every year, it's, it's great. How are you bowling so far today? We've been kind of watching you here on the live broadcast. Uh, what do you think of your ball reaction? Um, I have a great ball reaction. I bowled good my first game, bowled a 246. Um, this game I'm struggling a little bit, but I'll pick it back up. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to let you get back out there. Thanks for all you do for our country, and thanks for coming out this year. All right, my pleasure. Thank you. There you have it, Melanie Griffith. The real Melanie Griffith. The real one. And we're back on, we're back on. I'll take that Melody Griffith over the, 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 the actress any day of the week. <laughs> Plus, she can double in a tenth, so. You betcha. You Melody betcha. Gri that Melanie Griffith's on my, on my, on my, top of my list. <laughs> so back to the bowling in front of us. We've got some really good scores going in front of us still here today. <coughs> and my, and our, our, tech, our, tech, our tech guru has, again, said, Static weights play much less, you know, 5% roll on the ball performance. So, uh, always getting information on the fly. That's why we love Mike Sargent. 1-800-369-4402. Tech support. Mike Sargent. That's who you want to call. That's who's going to give you your answers to all your bowling needs and all your bowling questions. Josh Chambliss has just left the 10 pin on 14. He's still perfect on 13. Hasn't missed yet on 13. And we have, we're going to give you a, a different view this time from the top, from our booth with the, with the roaming camera. And there's, they're, they're just, the Air Force guys are just really enjoying themselves. You can see that they're full of camaraderie, just really, really hamming it up. And uh, everybody, excuse me guys, is uh, striking this game for the whole team. We're gonna take a nice look at Chuck. So it looks like Buchert or Buckert. I can't, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Pretty aggressive guy, goes up and at him. 
He's bowled uh, 18 frames. He has 16 strikes. That's impressive. He's only missed two balls. So here we're getting a panoramic view of kind of the entire, entire area where we are behind us. Maybe, Mike, you can take a, kind of give him a, a wide angle view of everything that's happening all the way up the rest of the house. As we slowly see the camera pan, you can kind of get an idea of what's happening, you know, with this event, you know, and how many bowlers are really in this event as we go past through our cameras and just look all the way down and just see bowler after bowler after bowler. And it's going to be like this all day today. And we're bringing this to you live here at the 2015 Military uh, Bowling Championships. We're proud to be here, and uh, we're, we're proud that you guys are uh, tuning in to watch us. So I'm going to let Mike's uh, arms rest a little bit, and uh, we're going to go back to the main camera here and get our buddy uh, Robert Walters on, who's uh, working on a triple, who seemed to have loosened it up. And he's got a four-bagger. He's got it going on right now. Walking with a, walking with a quiet confidence, we like to say in bowling. We're just... Uh, hey, Timmy, let's take a look. I'm over at the turbo booth right okay. now. Let me uh, let me click that camera on. We're going to click that roaming camera on. And Mike, you're on. Take it away. Look at the turbo booth over here, and you're going to see none other than Chris Sand right there, buddy. There he is. We're going to have him up in the booth a little bit later, but uh, turbo, all their great products they got here. Just uh, take a quick gander here. They got all their tapes and everything, and... Turbo's really been stepping it up with all the different things that they offer. Got a great table here. If you're watching online and you're going to be heading down here, you definitely want to come over to the Turbo table, check out what they have, talk to Chris. A lot of great stuff here from Turbo, buddy. Yeah, it's great to see. Mike, thanks for bringing us that. There's Chris. He gives us a little wave. And thanks again, Mike. We'll, we'll take our action back to, to our main cameras in front of us. And, uh, yeah. Turbo 2-in-1 grips. A lot of great products out there for, for all the bowlers' needs. Dave Bernhardt and his uh, family and uh, Lori and the, the whole crew up there in Michigan. Great people. Great people in the industry and uh, some great supporters of bowling. As we take a look at Brandon Bushrod, looks like he got a little firm there and left, left the bucket. Take a quick look in the chat here, see if anybody's talking to us. And uh, right now it's just Mike Sargent. It's just us and Mike Sargent. <laughs> so. Yeah, for those of you that don't know Mike, and I know we've been talking about him a little bit, but, but Mike works at the home office with us, um, one of my partners in crime, one of the great folks that works in the office. And uh, Mike's, Mike's one of the youngest guys in the office and really loves bowling and uh, always enjoy having him part of our broadcasts whenever we can. Let me take a quick gander here. Timmy, just want to see. Everything's looking good. We got a few viewers out there. Don't forget, everything will be archived on our YouTube channel, Inside Bowling's YouTube channel. Everything will be archived. You can come back and check it out. We're here at the Orleans, brother. Orleans, all the time. One of the greatest bowling facilities as far as being able to accommodate large groups, large tournaments. Team USA trials were just here. A lot of great events over the years here at the Orleans. Of course, their sister property, the Gold Coast, is also hosting a full house of bowling right now. They had their opening ceremonies this morning. We had our opening ceremonies over here. We'll be bringing you more coverage all day today, again tomorrow, and on Wednesday here from Las Vegas. Tim Mack, myself, Randy Peterson, West Pie is going to join us a little bit later as well. A lot of strikes this game. This game two, we're, we're in game two right now on the eight o'clock squad and people are really starting to get comfortable after game one. Seventeen after the hour, no matter where you are across the world, it is seventeen after the hour here in Las Vegas. Black seventeen. Pacific time, it's 9.17. I don't know what number nine, I don't know what color red is, if nine is red or black, but I know 17 is black. 17 is black. All day long, Wesley Snipes bet on it in passenger 57. <laughs> Always bet on black. 
That's what he says. So that's what that's how I that's how I view it. Josh Chambliss is still striking down there. Potential 279 in this game. Mike's asked me to describe the pattern and what type of equipment is being used. Um, I would say, Mike, uh, based on uh, what I'm seeing, because I haven't seen a graph of anything, it looks like a modified house pattern. And uh, it looks like it's about 39, maybe 38 to 30, 30, 39 to 41 feet. I'd have to check the buff. But um, I think maybe uh, Mr. Flanagan is walking in the office to check that. There's a variety of balls being used here, but the unique thing about the Orleans is it's a, it's a center that's got a, a fair amount of friction in the track because it's, it's, it's a center that's been used quite a bit over, over time. So the track kind of dominates, uh, dominates the patterns that put up there because it's got so much traffic on it. Um, so you see, you see some pearl balls going down the lanes. I see some optimists going down the lanes. They look really good right now. Uh, I've seen some high road solids go down the lanes. And uh, I've seen a little bit of everything. I've seen, uh, seen a couple cruxes go down the lanes. And uh, I've seen the Tour, Tour Fusion right in front of us. Uh, you know, Robert Walters is using a Tour Fusion. And then just to the right there, as you see on lane 19, uh, Dan Dwyer has got a nice four-bagger with an Optimus. So there's a little bit of everything going, on, going down the lanes. I see some Fusion. I've seen some high roads. I know that's a shock to most people in the, in the industry that an actual high road goes down the lane because... It's only the most popular ball, one of, if not the most popular ball in the last six years of all tournament players worldwide. Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna flip this over to uh, I think uh, to help answer that question. We'll see how close I was. Uh, Mr. Flanagan has got a graph for us. Mike, can you explain what the graph says and take it away? Yeah, no problem. Uh, just went into the tournament office, talked to Wendy McPherson, who is the tournament director here at the Orleans for the military championships, and she handed me this piece of paper right here, Timmy. This is the house shot. House shot, you can see it right here. There it, you go. It's a 32 feet house pattern, so that's what uh, the military championships is being conducted on here. They wanted high scoring, wanted to have a good time, and we're seeing it here, buddy. But the buff looks a little fat past 32 feet for sure. It looks like maybe the original is the front runs a 32, but uh, definitely it's a house shot. Thanks, Mike, for that. Really appreciate the update. Uh, but definitely that oil goes, is, that, that buff looks a little bit further. Yep, it's the transition. It gets down to all, all the way down to 40. So the original front run is to 32 feet, and it's a lot of oil in the front. But like I said, it, that, that cleaner transition gets all the way down to 41 feet. So there you go. We were right on, we were right on with our numbers. And uh, that's why we're seeing a variety of balls being used. On the house shot pattern, you usually see a number of balls being used. And... Uh, I believe they're only going to oil once today, Mike, and that's why they've got to, you know, they're going to have a significant amount of play being used on the lanes. So what you're going to see is you're going to hope the whole oil holds up over time. That's why, hence the, the heavy oil on the front lane, the house powder. Let's take a look at some scores here. And Mike's going down in the set tee here. He's gonna grab this young, this young, Mr. Flanagan's here with another, uh, another one of our, our military bowlers. And Mike, take it away, there you go, you're on. Hey Tim, I just had to take a minute to grab Tasha Bushrod here. She's throwing the ball really well. We've been watching her on yes. our pair. And Tasha, can you tell a little bit about where, where you're from and what you do in the military? Absolutely. Um, my name is Tasha Bushrod, as you said, and I am actually DOD. I'm not active duty. I uh, work at Edwards Air Force Base, um, and it's a great, it's a pleasure being here. A lot of fun. Um, come every year and uh, just want to bowl well. <laughs> yeah, well, we've been watching your ball reaction. you got a really good ball reaction out there. Take us a little bit through kind of how you've bowled so far. Uh, you're, you're just about at the end of game number two. You still got 220 left. Tell us about your ball roll. Well, right now, I just need to get the ball out, um, you know, stop pulling on it. And um, if I can keep, you know, keep going, I'll, I think I'll be okay. Okay, well, thanks for all the help with everything you do for us, and thanks for coming out and being part of this event. Thank you. There, she is. there he is. There Mike you Fl have it. 
Mike Flanagan with another one of our great military uh, bowlers out there taking care of us. Thanks, Mike. Just let the viewers at home watch a, a little bit, watch a little bit of the bowling, and watch what's going on in front of us. Only in Vegas, I can tell you. Everything happens in this city. Yeah, buddy. Everything happens in this city. <laughs> Maybe we should get her interview just to kind of see how she's feeling about what, what's <laughs> I don't happening. know if we can fit her on the screen. Oh, we can fit her on the screen. Don't worry <laughs> about that. <coughs> she wouldn't have any problem finishing fitting on the screen. A lot of banter going on amongst the players right now. It's kind of fun. They're, you know, all, all, all the teams out here, they had photos taken today with – with this lovely young lady, looks like a Vegas showgirl. Um, so they have, you know, they're in the process of purchasing their photos that they had. And uh, that's probably some of the over, you know, the overlay that you guys can hear of the, the talk that's going on in the background. They're negotiating prices right now from, from this mo model-esque beauty who's decided to jump in the photos with them. In the meantime... Hey, Timmy, why don't you just throw it over here to me, and I'll see if I can make we're, something we're gonna out throw of it. We're going to throw it over to Mike and uh, see if he can, see if he can pull, up, pull off this miracle here. Okay, so here I am, and this young lady right here, ma'am. What, what do we have here? What do we, what do we have here? We have team photos. Can I show everybody at home? Team photos right here. That's it, team photos. That's what we got going on. Oh, yeah, you're on right now, right now with me. Yep. Yeah, come you're come, on, over here. come, come on, on over here for just a second. Come on over here. So what is it you guys are doing here with the team photos? What we do is we uh, take a, um, the team photos of the event before they start bowling, and then while they're bowling, we um, bring the pictures back for them, and then they're available to them. That's it. Well, that's cool. And then you've got... Uh, we've got our showgirl Julie here with us today. And she's our Las Vegas showgirl. She's been in Vegas for pretty much her whole life. She's been on the strip showgirl for 20 years. She actually was in shows and everything. Wow. Really? And, and you said her name was Julie? Julie, yep. And my name is Julie as well. Let's see Your name can... is Julie as well. Well, that makes it very convenient. We, we need to get the other Julie on video Ju here. Julie, would you mind coming over here for just a moment? Okay, she says, hold on. So, Julie, the showgirl, this is going to be my first interview ever with a real-life showgirl. But this Julie here is outstanding, and she's been able to tell us everything that's going on. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, there you go. She had no idea that she was going to be on here at all. She did a great job, I mean, for, yeah. for never being on before. So, uh well, once, once we get the other Julia available. Yeah, she'll be over in a moment. We're going to throw it back to the lanes right now. And, uh, yeah. And when she's ready to come on, I'm going to swing it. I'm going to throw it right back to you in a hurry. Because I want to see this interview with a beautiful, proper Las Vegas showgirl. I don't think this is the first time she's had that contraption on her head. What do you think, Mike? Boy, Tim, I, I don't know. That's why it's Vegas. We, we're about, we're hopeful that we're going to find out here in about 35 seconds as you watch the great bowling go in front of you. And I'm waiting on Mike. Okay, come here on. we go. Come, come on over. We're going. We're going right here. We're live. I, I am here with with Julie, the showgirl. Julie, how you doing? I'm fabulous. Thank you. How are you? Doing good. This is the first time I've ever interviewed a real life showgirl, so I got to be honest. I'm a little nervous right now. Well, calm your nerves and get excited about bowling. Absolutely. How many years have you been coming to the military tournament? Oh my gosh, I think this is my third year at the military tournament. Three years. So uh, what is it about these folks that makes you want to come over here and spend some time with them? They're good people. They're good people. They, they, they cheer. They get excited. They bowl. 
they stand for good things, and they serve our country. What could be better than that? Totally, and I know you're getting a picture taken with all of them, and I see you walking around. How's that going for you? It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy the bowling because I walk around, I do the photos with the people, I get excited about Las Vegas, I get excited about bowling. You know, I get to serve good people who serve our country. And then, you know, I get to autograph everything and feel like a superstar. Well, you are a superstar, and we want to thank you for coming by and spending a little time with us. Thank you so much. All right. Go bowling! <laughs> there you go. Julie the showgirl. Gotta First time ever right there, buddy. Gotta love it. Gotta love, gotta love it. There you go. The good things in Vegas and the perks of our job. Right there. You never know when you're going to interview a showgirl, <laughs> and you never know when you're going to see a five-bagger. I mean, what, what, else can, what else is there? Is there anything better? This is, you know, I, I explain to folks quite a bit when they say live streaming, and they go, yeah, I've seen Bowl TV, I've seen Extra Frame, seen Bowling Digital, yeah. Little Michigan Bowler TV, and then I've seen Inside Bowling, and they say, Mike, what is it? What sets your channel apart from the others? What do, what do you, you know, what's unique about Inside Bowling? And I said, well, I, I put it this way. Extra Frame is like ESPN. Bowl TV is a little more like CNN. They've got more flavor than CNN, but it's about the best analogy I can make. And we're MTV. You're MTV? We're okay. MTV. At least we're not TMZ. That's right. <laughs> no, we, we, we're not, we don't like to to spread rumors or come up with any right. bad stuff. But what we like to stay real positive over here, and we're MTV. I just want to throw this out there. Rob Collins has come back from a, a very difficult start, and now he's bowling 10 strikes the second game. And I want to take the camera over to him because we're going to, we'd like to catch his, uh, his, uh, the rest of his 10th frame as Mike's going to go down in the set tee. And here's the epitome of... Digging your spikes back in. Okay, Mike, you're back on. We're down with you in the set tee with Mike uh, Flanagan. Uh, taking a look at Rob Collins, who has come back from his 160 start and, sh and is shooting the highest game on the team this time with a strike here. He shoots 240. I like it. I like it. But a nice 236 game with a spare, and that's what it's all about. So there you have it. The score slowed down just a tad this game on uh, from the Air Force fellas. <coughs> but they're still going to be well, well, well into the high. Uh, potentially, actually, they're going to be close to what they were. They're going to be close to uh, both having uh, 1,400 apiece after two games, which is an impressive start for, uh, for the first squad early in the morning. Yeah, scores down here, 237, 233, possible 219, 236, possible 225, and a possible 236, so 13 look, and 14. Yeah, you're looking at 680s and 690s, aren't you, if, they, if they're if they able to fi finish the deal here. That's impressive. After they both bolt 706 and 696 the first game. Pretty good, buddy. Yeah, these guys, uh, I just like, I like the mojo they have down there. They have the Friday Night Lights mojo. You know, they just have it going on right now. By the way, is that am I gonna, can we get in trouble for that, using that term? No, you're okay. Okay. Because Mojo, you know, I don't want to make sure that's not licensed by, uh, you know, Friday Night Lights. Mind you, I did go to that stadium a couple, uh, couple of months ago. Impressive place. Oh, he leaves a shaker seven. So he's going to be uh, in the 660s, low 660s, if uh, he can spare that. And Josh Chambers with a double here. They'll be 690. So they'll go 696, 698 with a strike here from Josh. That's impressive. That looked pretty good. Yeah. So that ball actually did double duty this game. It's bowled 451, 461. <laughs> yeah, it has. That's pretty imp You know you're close when you're using your teammates' balls. Okay, so now on his fill ball, he's grabbing a different ball. Okay. It's just going to... Little tester shot here. Is, he gonna, is it his own ball? That's what we want to know. Or is it his buddy's ball? <laughs> Not sure. It strikes two. So that's it from down here on 13 and 14, Timmy. Oh, okay, pal. We're going back up. Thank you. Back to our main uh, main pairs in the main event. 
and uh, thank Mike Flanagan for another great uh, sideline report. And uh, we need to know when Mike Sargent, we were just getting a message from Mr. Sargent, when can he come out and do an event with us? That's what he'd like to know. He's going to need to run that up the flagpole. Yeah, you're going to have to ask, um, you know, the powers to with be there, uh, Victor Marion, uh, Bob. I like it how you say the powers that be, and the first person you say is Victor Marion. <laughs> yeah, Victor Marion, Bob, 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 Bob. Uh, Uncle Bob in the back, you know. Oh, Bob Onishi, sure. Need Bob Onishi in the back. Um, Isaac Sims. Isaac, you know, th that tech team, you got, you know, you're a vital part of that tech team. And uh, and old Coach K just got done running a very successful Utah Open tournament. That's right. So without those guys' blessing, I'm sorry, Mike. You just Congratulations to the hair. Craig Harrington, your 2015 Storm Utah Open champion. The guy never, the guy always wins. And, and he's a really nice guy. Craig Harrington, if you're watching, don't tell Tim Mack. He'll know what that means. Okay. It's pretty, very, quite funny. And, Sergeant, if you're watching, you probably could come down here and maybe help Timothy Banks line up a little bit. He's struggling a little bit on the lanes right now. Can, can you get a feel? And maybe he needs a little tech support from you. Come down here and line him up. Meanwhile, Robert Monroe leaves a little light 5'10". I'm going to step away for a second so I can go get uh, the booth myself, Mr. My, me and Mr. Flanagan, some drinks, because I know I'm in the desert, but right now I've got cotton mouth and I'm a little parched. So I'm going to go get us some, some, some liquid refreshments, and guys, we'll be right back. Okay, so Timmy's going to step out. I'm going to take over the show here, and uh, he, uh, he knows exactly what I'd like to have to drink. It's a Gatorade. So if you're just joining us, completion of game number two, heading into game number three here at the 2015 Military Bowling Championships. I'm Mike Flanagan, Tim Mack. He's been joining me all morning. He'll be back in a moment. West Pyle also join us throughout the day. Opening squad, six on a pair. They're bowling as a team. Squads today at 8 a.m., 12 p.m. and again at 4 p.m. We'll bring you all of it here as well as tomorrow and Wednesday from the Orleans. Active duty military personnel here at the military championships. Been going on for many, many years here in Las Vegas. Brad Edelman and his entire staff of 30 taking care of all the bowlers at not only here at the Orleans but also over at Gold Coast. Full squads over there. Storm represented well at each location. Bob Hart got things started this morning at 8 a.m. for our opening ceremonies. And then, of course, over at the Gold Coast, it was Randy Peterson this morning taking care of the opening festivities over there. A great week for bowling. And uh, when you think about bowling and social media and things that you read and hear being from the Midwest and not being in Las Vegas that much for bowling events and since moving to Utah and being able to come down here and be part of many many events it's really neat to see so many bowlers come out and participate in events like this and the TAT is coming up the true amateur tournament will also be around I believe it, it it's next week just coming up here in the near future and Brad Edelman and his team doing a lot of great things. They've also been involved with the high roller for many, many years. They brought it back. Uh, participation levels uh, has been down a little bit, so kind of an off again, on again thing. But Brad's got a lot of great things rolling here with the military and the true amateur tournaments. So if you want to find out more about these great Vegas events, and when you come here, you know, plan a week. Come to Vegas, enjoy some time, bring your spouse, do some bowling, enjoy Las Vegas. You can head over to... Uh, MilitaryBowlingChampionships.com. You can also head over to TrueAmateurTournaments.com and High-Roller.com to find out more information about all the great events. And of course, Storm, as well as Rotogrip, involved with all of Brad's tournaments and has been for many, many years. You can get bowling balls packaged in with your pricing, a lot of different uh, things available for you. And then, of course, when you come to one of these events, my friends 
my cohorts, my coworkers, my friends at Storm are always at these events to help answer questions about the bowling balls, get them laid out properly for you, and then you can get them drilled at k, &K Bowling Services here inside uh, the locations that Brad's events are held at. So just a great reason to come out and, and participate. Meet some of your favorite Storm staffers, such as Tim Mack, who's been joining me today, Randy Peterson, of course, the regional sales manager, always coming out to support. I know next week, Don Moe's and, and Ralph Solon are going to come out. I know the sales guys are always excited to come see the bowlers and meet the bowlers and, and be here to, to assist. So it's more than just a bowling tournament. It's, uh, it's an experience and something you do not want to miss come out sometime and uh, enjoy these great events so game number three happening right before us of this four game set playing 17 and 18 and 19 and 20 Robert Walters opened with a double and now leaves a 2-8-10 They're bowling on a house shot today. Scores are high, but it's perfect for this event. Exactly what we'd like to see. Bowlers out there striking, having a good time, posting scores. Watching these bowlers bowl on the house shot makes me want to join a league here. Darren Oster on lane 20. Looks like the lanes are starting to hook a little bit for some of these folks. Misses the head pin left. Brandon Buckrod has been striking quite a bit. Solid nine. Tasha Bushrod, we interviewed her earlier. San Diego Air Force. Spare double, looking for three in a row. That's one thing we're definitely seeing is the bowlers are starting to come in a little bit high as this house shot begins to break down. They're going to want to move a little bit left. Move their eyes a little bit further towards the right. Open up this lane pattern a little bit. There was a really nice shot for Dan Dwyer. Throwing the Optimus. I see a lot of Optimus bowling balls going down the lane. Red, white, and blue. Pretty fitting for this event. want to thank everybody for watching this morning, this Monday morning, wherever you are. Thank you for watching on InsideBowling.com's IBTV channel. That's an opening triple now for Melanie Griffith.
one thing about these events that is really cool for me is with live streaming bowling tournaments, usually you live stream qualifying squads, trying to beat a number. Then there's a semifinals and usually some sort of stepladder finals. And you have some knowledge of a lot of the bowlers and accomplishments that you can speak of. And then I've done some college tournaments, uh, which is a completely different dynamic. I've done some youth events as well. But never have I had the opportunity to come out and bring you coverage of an event like this. And it's really cool, and it's a nice change of pace. These bowlers are all bowling in their respected teams as a pair, as a unit of six, and they're bowling a beat-the-board tournament here with a total of nine squads. And you'll see some bowlers bowl multiple times on the house shot. Very easy going, relaxed atmosphere. And as Tim Mack talked about earlier, just a really good aura in the room, so to speak. Just everybody's really in good spirits, very, very happy. I haven't seen anybody kick a ball return or um, talk about how the shot's bad or just any any negative things that, that we do see sometimes. There's just none of that here. And I just want to mention that because I think it's a good lesson to be learned. Um, sometimes our emotions get the best of us when throwing a bowling ball, especially when money is involved. And um, you come to an event like this and you just get humbled. So... I'm Mike Flanagan here in game number three. Frame number five of this four game beat the board style tournament. Teams of six on each pair of lanes. Trios on each side. Bowling together. Try to post a good number. You're watching lanes 17 and 18 and 19 and 20 from the Orleans Bowling Center. And this is just one half of what is going on with the military championships. Bowlers bowling over at Gold Coast right now. Full bowling center over there as well. A lot of retired veterans over there. The Orleans event here focuses more on the active duty military personnel. This tournament and this live streaming would not be possible without some of the great sponsors. Of course, Storm, the Bowlers Company, Turbo, Counts Customs, Bowlers Journal International, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Jim Beam, Budweiser, Edelman Financial Services, and of course, K&K &K Bowling Supply right behind us. Tim Mack back joins us. Nice to be back. I had to get my whistle wet. Two. 
so I could continue <clears throat> to unleash the lyrics and give you guys the play-by-play -play on what's transpiring out here. So yeah, it's uh, had to make a Gatorade run. So Gatorade, if you're out there, we're not, <clears throat> we wouldn't be upset if you sponsored this event. Be nice. I'll tell you what, man. If Gatorade could uh, could get on board, I I'd love to be able to. <laughs> I'm always drinking Gatorade. I guess they're I guess they're getting the advertisement for free, so why would they need to pay for it? But they probably right. They should do the right thing though and just give us some money. I agree. Anything interesting happened while I made my run? I uh, just did a bit of a rundown and been kind of commentating on 17 through 20 and what's going on. And The Air Force boys haven't slowed down over there. <clears throat> Can you give the people an idea what, um, <clears throat> what transpires as far as um, the format? If anybody's wondering what happens today. You know what, you know what I mean? Yeah, we've got. I don't. I don't know. The sure. Format, and I need to ask you what that, uh, what it is, and what it entails. Well, it's a beat the board type tournament, just like if you went and bowled USBC Open Championships, or if you went and bowled your local state tournament. Okay. Except this tournament runs for three days. Is it a re-entry or not re-entry? I believe that. Bowlers are bowling more than one squad. Okay. I, d I don't know if you can enter with the same team. But you know what? I got this. Just give, just hold that thought for about 75 seconds. 75 seconds, I'm going to handle the booth while you're gone. <clears throat> Mike's going to go, uh, or I should say Miyagi is going to go find out. Mr. Mike Flanagan, my boss about uh, the questions I just asked, so maybe some of you viewers. You and, you and Del Ballard with this boss stuff has just got to stop. We are the PR team, baby. <laughs> PR team, that's okay. Part, glad to be part of that PR team, the great Del Ballard. Wow, what a successful run he just had, huh? <clears throat> Did a great job with our staff over in uh, Japan just recently. Had fantastic finishes over in... Uh, tournament over there the DHC well done Dell hope you're flying home safe and to all of our staff hope they're flying home safe and making home safe because got some big events coming up here in the near future <coughs> just let you guys your viewers at home enjoy some bowling watch some bowling and got any questions or concerns Fire them into us. Be nice to hear your thoughts and ideas and what you think. All right, Timmy. Can uh, I get some? Can, can I get some uh, some computer work done here? I've got all the answers here. I've got an, an encyclopedia. You're on, buddy. I got an encyclopedia. Wendy Speak McPherson uh, Britannica here. Okay, so. So Wendy, one of my all-time favorite greatest female bowlers of all time, is also just happens to be now the tournament director here at the Orleans for this event. So we have some questions for you, Wendy. We want to know, first of all, um, how many squads are there in this team event? The team event in the active duty vets division, which is what we are over here, we have three squads, and, and it's one we were two squads last year, so we're a full squad more this year, 22, 23 teams more than last year. But we have three squads, A, B, and C. Okay, and then that's just today? That is just today. Each day, um, everybody bowls once. So whether you're the 8 a.m. squad today, uh, tomorrow you'll be bowling at a different time, and then on Wednesday you'll be bowling at a different time. So you bowl once a day with your squad whether it's 8 a.m., noon, or 4 p.m. Okay, so each day is its own tournament, is that right? Each day is its own tournament. You're exactly right. Today is team event. Um, tomorrow we are bowling singles, then Wednesday is doubles, and we finish at the end of the day. Checks are cut and ready for the bowlers the next day. 
Cool. All right. And then what's what's happening over at Gold Coast? Do you know what's going on over there? I know that you're in charge of this facility, but could you give us a little, like a rough draft of what's going on over there? I know it's a zoo over there, Mike. Uh, I saw your photo from Facebook of where am I? And it was the paddock over there at Gold Coast. Uh, 175 senior retired and retired teams. Um, and they're doing the same thing. It, it is broken down into squads and shifts and some of the squads, uh, some of the sh squads have a day off, some both straight days, but it's just, uh, it's four and a half huge days of lots of bowling over there. Okay, well, that, there you have it. And Tim, one more question I got while well, we got Wendy here, in case she's busy all week for us. PWBA has uh, surfaced back up. I know they don't have a schedule yet. Uh, there's really been no real clear details. So... I'm, you're probably going to dance around the question, but will we see you if they announce some dates out on the PWBA? Uh, I, I'd like to know where and when. That That's the biggest thing. Will you see me for a tournament? Absolutely you will. Two tournaments? Possibly. Three? Possibly. Love to know where and when. Busy, busy, busy with the, the high roller military events, Mike. And, um, you know, we'll see. I, I'd love to do it all. We'll see how the schedule fits. Okay, there you have it. I hope she's out there bowling as well, Timmy. That's great news, Mike. That's great news. I'm, I'm a big fan of Wendy, and uh, <clears throat> I know she's got fans all over the world. So uh, I certainly hope that she's bowling too. So thanks for taking that interview, and uh, we're going to take it back to the main lanes. Thanks, You got Mike. it, buddy. Man, I hope she bowls, buddy. She's, uh, <clears throat> she's iconic in our sport as far as I'm concerned. She's 31 titles. One of the greatest female bowlers to ever lace them up. One of the greatest bowlers to ever lace them up. And it's unfortunate that the women's tour got cut short the way it did because um, who knows what, how many more titles she could have won. Who knows? The number could you know, her, Carolyn Doran Ballard, you know, Kelly Kulik, Liz Johnson, you know, even my wife, Brenda Mack. I mean, who knows how many tour tournaments those – those girls could have kept winning and uh, over time. Michelle Feldman, you know, just to name a few. Yeah, buddy, Wendy Mack, geez. She's special. Man, special is a good word to describe her. 300 on TV in Japan for $120,000. She's done it all. So we got, we got a clarification. Today's team event, tomorrow is singles, and uh, doubles is on uh, Wednesday. That's great. And for those of you that, that are watching, you know, a lot of times, uh, just to give you an idea of what goes into live streaming, is we have to uh, get everything set up, have to build the graphics, uh, have to coordinate what tables are ours, and putting together risers and, and internet connection and feeds. And one of the last things that is on our list is what is actually going on once we get there. And it's such a busy event that uh, it's all, it almost feels better to even get the answers right on the air and learn with everyone because everyone's asking the same questions. But team event today. So our, uh, our Air Force guys are really, really a team to, to be reckoned with here. Yeah, they really put the gauntlet down early. I, I know that it is handicapped event, but still, even with the handicap. I don't know what the handicap's based upon, but uh, is there? I don't know if there's a scratch division. If there is, it's gonna be they're gonna be awfully tough. Uh, but we got to look next door to our boys on the bottom left. LS has the front seven strikes down there. It's something we need on lane 11. We need to keep uh, we need to keep a monitor on that and kind of see how that plays out over there. He's got 347 for his first two games, so he's obviously figured something out. If we were at the USBC Open Championships right now, those strikes would have just turned red. Yeah, it would be a lot easier to see. Speaking of which, that's going to be starting here up, coming up pretty soon, isn't it? Yeah, a couple of months in a town called El Paso. A couple of months? I thought it starts in February. March this year. Okay. First that, week of. Is that because ISIS is down there? They're trying to get rid of oh, ISIS? Man. I was not. I was. Oh, man. I, the whole. See, here's what happens when you commentate is you think of things and. Um, <laughs> you never know where they're going to come out. And I wasn't going to say. I, I was thinking kind of the same thing because right now there's a little bit of a stigma about that. Yeah. Uh, 
and I know, Tim, that you were just kind of poking fun at how ridiculous that is that some of the bowlers have been saying that. Madness. But, but, uh, but. <laughs> a chance of being struck by lightning. Oh, my goodness. Oh, buddy. Boy, if I tell you what, if I read everything on, if I, if I watched CNN and believed everything they said, it could be problems. I just want to throw this out there. Dick Baker shot 785 for his three-game block. Where's he at? Right over there on 23 and 24. Got some really good scores over there. 683, 673, 589, 613, 785, 642. So that's some serious striking. He's got the front eight down there, doesn't he? Now he's got seven, sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna go down and get some footage of the, the eight or the eighth shot. Yep, okay. Let me uh, get that camera up, up and running first. Uh, but um, tell me when you're ready and we'll we'll be good to go. Yeah, we'll just get his, his eighth shot, then we'll come off of it and we'll see what happens. All right, you're down in the set tee, I think. <clears throat> and uh, there's Julie just doing her what Julie does. Yep, there you go. And then here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you live right now into the set tee. You're on. As you can see, there's Julie, the showgirl. An impressive interview from Mike, Mr. Mike Flanagan, my boss, PR team, PR team rules. So this is Lonnie Smith. Here he goes for the front eight. Lonnie came up a little short there. Looks like he cut, cut, cut one off there. Uh, Mike and uh, came up high in the head pin. Okay, I guess back to 17 and 18. Yeah, we're going back. I'm going to call it out now. I'm going to come up a little bit short in my prediction. <clears throat> Josh Chambliss can only shoot uh, 793, so he's not going to get to the 800 that I thought he was going to get to. Shame. Remember, this is a four-game event, so, you know, he could still shoot a real real big 1,000 set. Yeah, but 800 would have been nice. What's the highest set you've ever bowled in a four-game? Four games? Four games. 1156. Missed twice. Switching pairs. Moving pairs. You know, I think a lot of times. Meteor storm. People don't even realize that when you shoot, a lot of people that shoot those high scores, it is moving pairs. 1997. Strike over the top seven. Sheet 280. 300. 300. Two, uh, I, I bowled 286 the next game, front 10, bucket spare, 666, and then I went solid nine sheep for 290. Very odd score. At 35 out of 36 twice, can't get there. Can't get there. El Nino with that. How many games do you think you've bowled in your life? Not enough. I need more. I'm going to bowl the Tournament of Champions coming up. I'm excited about that. What would winning a PBA national title mean to you? You know what? I don't know. Because um, it's a good question, Mike. I won a huge event in 2009 in, 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 in Korea. Top 30 Japanese points list. Top 30 Korean KPB, KPBA points list. 25 exempt pros. 
proper format, 36 games, 36 games to get to the TV show, carry the pins. I was number one seed. Myself, Wes Malott, Sean Rash, and two Koreans, and I beat the Korean on the show, and it was a major championship. I, it's a Japanese PBA title and a Korean PBA title. My injuries are well documented. I never really bowled full-time on tour healthy. But um, if I did, I, th I, you know, I think my, you know, when in the in the late '90s when those guys went out, I think I'd have a, or would have had a pretty successful career. And now the World Bowling Tour titles that, that are given for PBA titles. If you decide to uh, retroactive the, like they did to the Masters, I'd have like 35 PBA titles because I've won all those tournaments multiple times. So with those guys in the field too. Two of my biggest wins internationally with Pete Weber was, was with me and in the field and encouraging me and supporting me in both events. So it's hard for me to put a finger on it, but I'm going to bowl the Tournament of Champions with a little extra in my mind and a little extra in my heart, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, these next couple tournaments that I step on the lanes, when I do step on the lanes, I, I anticipate to have an extra gear, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So uh, I had some great work over in Finland. I just got done, uh, <clears throat> you know, the owner of our company, Bill Crispin, been very like a father figure to me. He's, he says, you know, you still got a lot of good bowling left in you. I, I know I'm an employee at the company, but I don't bowl for a living anymore, but I can still influence the game and, and, and win some tournaments. And um, when I get on the lanes, I want to be competitive and I want to win. I don't want to just show up and be mediocre. So I didn't bowl the World Series of Bowling this year, so I don't, I, I don't get a chance at many of those PBA national titles anymore, you know what I mean? I'm in the back working now, as you know, as part of our uh, support staff with with Yoda, the great Del Ballard, who is Yoda. Hey, and, speaking uh, of which, Del has just done a fantastic job. Amazing, amazing. You know, he's really done a just a great job. You know, and uh, you know Jimmy Callahan and myself and uh, the big dog Chris Schlemmer. Shouts out to him. Uh, he, you know, when we uh, we worked the World Series really hard together this year, and we had a really successful World Series for the company. Tasha doubles in the tenth there. She's got 2-0 left. Yep, she's gonna have a nice uh, 596 squad here. And uh, Brendan Bushrod's bowled, bowled okay. He actually, uh, he, he just can't seem to complete the game. He's going high now. He needs a little <coughs> bit of a coaching lesson, I believe. He needs to move about six boards left of his feet. He needs to move his eyes in about three. And, and change balls. He could, he could. I'm not sure what he has in his hand right now, but just if he was gonna use the same ball, um, that would be my move. Uh, you, we maybe should go down and get the camera and tell him. No, probably not. He might not like that. So. Yeah, you know, I, you know. You let these guys do what they want to do. And Oh, fantastic. Fantastic uh, finish by Tasha Bushrod. Nice 202 game. Very nice person. I know that a lot of people don't think I'm going to have a chance to win the Tournament of Champions. <laughs> yeah. I know that. But I'm just going to leave it at that. When I bowl now, from here on out, I'll be bowling with a little extra, and I'll be ready. And if my body holds up, my knee and my shoulder. When you when you make the show, who's going to sit on the show with you? Is it going to be Dell or is it going to be Jimmy? <laughs> it's going to be Brenda. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> In a Team Storm jacket? Yeah. No, it's going to be. Uh, <clears throat> I'd have both of those guys, you know. Um, you know, I've been there a lot of times as a bowler, and, and that's what Dell and I talked about. You know, there, there's no substitute, and, and Randy as well, Randy Peterson. There's no substitute, you know, when, when, when you're throwing shots for $50,000, you know what I mean? That's just only the person that's been in that, in that spot knows right. what that feels like. So um, from a bowler's perspective, and I think that's why – Del Ballard is such a great, great rep because he knows what the bowler's thinking. But I also, what people don't know is it's also why Jimmy Callahan is a great rep as well because he can throw it too, and people don't know that. Jimmy Callahan was, you know, was a, was a solid bowler. Oh, yeah. And, um, 
you know, he, he's, a, he, he's obviously our, a great salesman for us here in the West, and, but he's a smart cat. You know, Jimmy's a smart cat, and he's a pump-up guy. And, uh, you know, he, he's, got the, he's got some experience behind his belt. He's, it's not like he doesn't know what he's doing. So if you look at most of our guys, you know, they've, they, 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 they've thrown shots when they needed to, you know, and uh, that makes a big difference in the coaching and, and that perspective. Here's a look, a little different look here at the lanes. Gives you an opportunity to see the scoreboards. So there you go. Josh is on well on his way to 790 here with this strike here. Heading into game number four. So you got 734 up top, 684 up top, 575, 684, 675, and 793 potentially. You want to? Uh, I'm getting over here. We're camera. ready to go, and we're going to take a look at. There's your scoreboard right there of the Team Air Force. Over on lanes 13 and 14. So. <clears throat> We got the black cloud out on Josh Chambliss that time for the six count. But uh, they're going to wrap up here with some really, really solid scores after the first three games. They did a good job breaking the lane down, and, uh, and this house shot pattern the scores are really going to be, you know, going to be quite good. Some really, really good scores out there. Also some really, really good bowlers, too. 788, 779. There you have it. 779, Josh Chambliss, 574-684, 734, 684, 665. And we're going to take you back to uh, the main pair now. And uh, thanks for that, Mike. Good stuff. PR team at work right here, buddy. Wireless cameras are awesome. Shows Miyagi. Miyagi. So fourth game here of the opening Monday 8 a.m. squad of team event. We've got three different squads of team event today, 8 a.m., noon. And as well at 4 o'clock, we'll be bringing you coverage all day long. YouTube, YouTube, archives on YouTube. Hopefully, you're enjoying what you're seeing out here from the Orleans. A little different look. It's not a PBA event. It's not really a, a, a big event that, that you would say has a lot of notoriety. It's kind of a hidden event, and that's why we wanted to be here, to let people know about what's going on with these military championships. And really... Just to get off on a brainstorming session here for a moment. This is a great week-long event of bowling for our military personnel. Okay. Why couldn't you have corporate week where all business professionals come out and bowl for a week and get to meet other business professionals and talk about how they do their jobs and team share and build and things like that? And why couldn't you have you know, many different types of things like that, like uh, auto mechanic week, where it's all auto mechanics come out and bowl. Musicians week, where it's all a bunch of people that just haven't been able to land like a big label or trying to get their feet wet. How about YouTube superstar bowling week, where it's all people that have YouTube channels that come out and just want to mix and mingle. Could you imagine how well that would be video documented on YouTube? on YouTube with all YouTube personnel people coming out and bowling? The, especially the people that have all the millions of hits of YouTube. You know yeah, what I mean? e even like, but, but just think if you got a few of those to come. What would happen? And then how many other people that are just starting channels and what and would want to rub elbows and... I read somewhere that some, there's a guy <coughs> that has probably one of the really smartest minds in bowling. And if he was our leader in bowling, we'd be in a better position, and he could help us. I like to call this guy, he's very, he, I, I use this one word for this guy, is, is unique. He's a unique individual. 
He's an outside and inside the box thinker. He likes being outside the box, but he loves being inside the box. He's just a unique character. <laughs> Sounds a lot like the guy that I'm talking to you right You're now with these great me. ideas. But I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to mention any names. So I'm not going to name drop. But I love the way you think. Well, I just like to fill up bowling centers. Sure. Put more bowling balls in people's hands. That would do it. That would do it. You know, those people that do those things. I'm going to make a note in my phone right now about those this people that, Those YouTube. people that do those, do those things, you know, how many of them are just putting their shoes on, putting a pair of house shoes on and grabbing a house ball? Can you imagine what they do if they grab a sh shoes that fit, fit well? Oh, yeah. You know, and they were comfortable and looked okay. And then they grabbed a ball that actually had some performance in it. And went out and had, you know, and had a performance. Speaking of shoes, I got to throw this out there. As, as, a, um, as a company that we endorse at Storm, that we... That we, you know, I don't really want to say sister company because they're kind of doing their own thing. But, but we have a, a partnership and an agreement with the folks down at uh, 900 Global. And the 3G shoes just coming back to being part of the PBA and PWBA. Really comfortable shoes. If you're looking for some new bowling shoes, check out 3G. Check out 3G uh, bowling shoes. You can go to 900global.com to take a look at that. Congratulations to Chris Barnes as well on his 300. Bowled overseas at DHC. Takes home a cool just about 86,000 in U.S. dollars just happened uh, this past weekend. So just want to give a shout out to our friends over there at 900 Global and 3G as well. Also, our friends at Rotogrip have come out with two great new bowling balls just now. Here at the beginning of the year, seeing a lot of success. Mike Fagan won with the Hypercell Skid at the 2014, even though it aired in 2015 live, PBA World Championship. And then, of course, coming up here in February, Storm has the new Rocket and the Crux Pearl coming out to a pro shop near you. And those two bowling balls are two bowling balls you're going to want to take a serious look at for competing in the USBC Open Championships, your local state tournaments, and any tournaments that you go on bowl, those are going to be the hottest two new balls coming out, the Rocket and the Crux Pearl. Bring on the Rocket. Bring on the Rocket. I got, I, I've heard, you know, it gets, leaked on, it, it gets leaked on some of these social media sites, and then, you know, I get inundated with phone calls about it, um, about talking about it, and... Uh, well, you know, I... I, I think th it's going to be a huge piece for us. Well, I think it's going to be a long, long time. Two touchdown, you know. Yeah. It's going to be a huge piece for us in the future. I think it's going to be a long, long time. Rocket Man. Rocket Man. I think it's going to be a long, long time. That's, that's, I like that. Or William Hung. William Hung sang that song. Elmer just came over and took a photo with me. Nice guy. Elmer, yeah, I love him. Told him to move in a little bit and just let it float off his hand. Just let it roll. He rolls are great. Saws the five. Saws the five. Love it. Just let it roll, baby. Just let it roll. Came up here, I told him, I said, move your feet a little further left and just let it roll. I got a question here from, from Storm Tech Guru, Mr. Mike Sargent. What is my favorite ball of all time? I'll tell you what, that's a great question, but it's kind of hard to choose just one. The Firestorm was an amazing product. The Thunder, Black Thunder was an amazing product. The Lightning Storm was an amazing product. I still have all three of those, the originals, in my basement. Really? I yes. And I also have three blanks. Is it, is it fair to say that uh, Storm and Lay's potato chips have something in common? Where's this going? Well, Lay's potato chips is their slogan is "bet you just can't, you bet you can't eat just one." I, I, I would say so because the, I, I think that as the game has evolved, <coughs> times have changed, our balls have changed, and our R and D department uh, back at back at uh, in Utah with you know the great great people that we have at home, a lot of smart minds at home, you know, with Steve Klumpkin and Victor Marion and uh, Hank Boomershine, you know. Uh, 
and uh, Max downstairs and Corbett and you know and and what people don't know is even Bill to this day you know he developed a pretty successful core you know that's still uh, one of our bench in one of our benchmarks um, so you know there was errors I, 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 at one point in time, I never, I, I would never, never thought I would ever throw another ball other than the Charm ER. I thought I may sleep with that ball for the rest of my life. I used to actually when I bowled tournaments with it. I would not, leave, I would not leave that ball in the bowling center. I would take it out of the bowling center and take it with. <laughs> take I would it take with it you. to my hotel room wherever I went. Then the X Factor came out, and I'm a big Tootsie Roll fan. I'm a big chocolate fiend. I've got, a, I've got an epiphany for the chocolate on on so many different levels. So it smelled like a chocolate, smelled like chocolate, and it rolled like gold. And it made me, it was, it was really, really good. Hey, that's pretty good. And then they backed that up with the X Factor Deuce. And I just thought, I didn't think anybody could beat me with those two bowling balls. And for a while there, nobody did. <laughs> I'm, I've got a guy that told me, Mike, now that you work at Storm, I know there's a bunch of extra bowling balls just sitting around from over the years. Oh, yeah, just sitting around. Which is not true. Yeah, they're all sitting around everywhere, yeah. I will do whatever I need to do for you if you could get me an original Black Thunder. I have one at the house. Original? Yeah. Undrilled? Yeah. No. Yeah. And an original Forest Fire, and an original Lightning, and an original Sun. And I'm sorry, no matter what you can do, you can't have them. So, back to the answer. So what's your plan with those balls? I don't know. I don't know. Are you, really well, know. you won't ever put holes in them, will you? No. You know what the disappointing thing is? I'll tell you the disappointing thing is. Is uh, I'm disappointed I don't have a black, bl blank electrical storm. Because that's the first one I threw. That was the first. That changed my life. That powder blue ball, like the movie Powder. Yeah. Changed my life. That's the second. That's the second storm ball I ever owned. Changed my life. It changed my life. Speaking of changing lives. Well, no, not speaking of changing lives. But this hey, I, this I, company's changed my life. I'm Mike. This is Tim. And, and together we're the PR team. We are part of the PR team, and we can explain to everyone at Storm the PR team is uh, myself. I'm the director of public relations, and Tim Mack is within. The PR team, Bob Hart, Randy Peterson, Mike Sinek, Jeff Carter, Del, Del Ballard, Del Ballard yeah. and Dave Cost. We are the PR team, and um, we take our jobs very seriously. Well, we have a lot of responsibilities. We, you know, we have a, an, a, a, a huge staff that we've got to look after. Um, events like this, uh, I'd like to think that we, we are able to morph into a, a, lot, a lot of different uh, responsibilities and facets, you know. I mean, Randy does his he does his spiel on the shows on Sundays. You know, we got Dell working with the staff out, out out on tour, dealing with all different personalities. Speaking of PR team. Speaking of it, there he is. <laughs> Bob, Bob Hart. Uh, I, almost, almost on. Hey, Bobby. Oh, almost Bobby. on. Almost on call. On call, Bobby. Get get up in this area, right up in here. Will you stand up here, buddy? Right up in here. All right, Bob's Bob's almost on call. Business. Almost on call. Amazing. The other important thing that we do as well is we work very closely with our partners uh, within our, our company with other departments. You know, we're, we're heavily involved with assisting anytime sales needs help, anytime marketing needs help. Hell, even accounting. You know, everybody. That's the side of the office I sit in is accounting. Coming gonna, up, Bobby? I'm going to have Bobby sit down and get we, on, we just, just want, say a couple words we real just quick. Want it, we just want to, Bob, give him that headset. Give him that headset right there. I want you to sit down. Bob, have a seat. We're, we're talking PR team right now, and uh, it was almost like a magnet. It just came right over. It was, almost like you it was almost like you knew that we were talking about it. Yeah, it was like you knew that we were going to talk about the PR team. Bob Hart joins us now in the booth. Hey, what's up, Bobby? Hey, not much. Just enjoying the uh, tournament. What a turnout, huh? Yeah, great turnout. Great turnout for this thing. Nice job on the opening ceremonies. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you are actually retired military. No. I, I spent uh, four years. In oh, is that how that works? Yeah. Okay. But uh, I was honorable discharge, so I'm eligible for this oh, tournament. Okay. I didn't realize it until today, but uh, 
the last two years, they all you had to do is have an honorable discharge. Oh, okay. Cool. So you love coming to Vegas? I love coming to Vegas, and I love especially this tournament. I mean, I've been coming here so long, and uh, many of these people are friends of mine for a number of years, and it's it's nice every year to re reconnect, you know. Well, you bowled, in the, you bowled in the original one. Is that is that correct? Did you bowl in the one that was in 1958, I believe, didn't you? Yep, Nellis Air Force Base. You were uh, six. I was uh, six or seven. I forget. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. Actually, I was uh, 21 years old. I was stationed at 29 Palms, California, in the Marine Corps base out there, 29 stumps. And uh, we came down, some of the fellows from up there, went to Nellis and bowled in the military tournament. So, needless to say, it doesn't seem that long ago, but uh, wow, that's a long time. 56 years? Wow. That is a long time. <laughs> hey, we, uh, we, you get in the booth, and now all of a sudden we've got a million viewers and all these people in the chat saying hello. Well, gee, thanks. I, it's nice to see all my friends checking in there. Yeah, how great is it that... Um, that from a year ago to now, how you've recovered from, from, you know, the misfortunes that happened at the World Series last year, and you're just back with us, and everything's good, man. You know what? I'm very fortunate, and I recognize that every day, and uh, the support that I had uh, during those days, and uh, especially the support my wife got. Uh, Bev was with me constantly. She never left the hospital, and... Uh, Actually, she suffered a lot more than I. I was sleeping most of the time. She <laughs> was not. So uh, the support that I, all the people, many from the militaries too, we still, uh, you know, correspond on Facebook and, and emails. And uh, they all know my wife through the, the Facebook. In fact, they're interested more in her than they are in me. <laughs> they're not kidding me. They're not kidding me at all. But, yeah, I feel pretty fortunate, and I do feel pretty good. And, uh, like I say, it's just very nice to be here. I think it's awesome that you're on Facebook, and that you mentioned Facebook people connecting. It's like you almost you got to have it these days. Well, I, I guess you do. I'm not as adamant on it as most people. I'm not as on it every day. My wife really keeps up with things and, and her friends and, you know, the, People generate a lot of friendships on Facebook so when they've never even seen each other in person. It's pretty neat. Bobby, what do you think of the chances that we've seen a couple 300s today in the tournament? I think it's a good chance that we're going to see maybe one or two of them today. I'll tell you what, the scores look very good across the across the house. You've got a couple of pretty good, strong teams down there. Uh, see Dick Baker. Uh, 785 he's got for the first three, and he's bowling 250 this game. Yep. Young young man over here, Josh Chambers, got 779 for three oh. over here on 13 and 14. He bowled 299 game one. And, uh, you know, that team's really coming along. they, they got their bottom right-hand bowler that's struggling, but that team's uh, got really high scores right now. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of strikes out there. It's a very nice shot. The yep. house, the house is well manicured. It's clean. It looks very good. And, uh, you know, these people are avid bowlers. These, you got, you've got bowlers out here. They come to this tournament. And uh, this is the largest military sports event in existence. That's fantastic. It's the largest tournament of any kind. That, that, that they run that, in any sport, right? With the military, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's fantastic to see the support out here and from, from these guys. And, you know, the, I, I mentioned it earlier. They're, they're so, they're so, their work ethic is so good because their discipline is so good. But you see the camaraderie they have amongst their teammates and the positive energy that, that they show. You don't see any negative, nothing negative out here, nothing. It, and you know what? Our bowlers that bowl today, our youth players, our professionals, could come out here and take a lesson and learn from these guys Absolutely. on how they carry themselves when they have a bad break or something happens. And listen, these guys want to win just as much as anybody else. But our professional ranks and our sport in general should come out here and watch this tournament and watch how they carry themselves because it's prof they're, they're professionals. You watch anyone that's been in the military and you see discipline. That's what you learn in the military, to be disciplined and uh, to be on time and uh, be responsible for your actions. And 
the other house is completely full too. It's just like this. It got completely full. They're all the same caliber of people. No doubt, no doubt, buddy, no doubt. <clears throat> I, 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 you know, this is my first time, and I've, I'm finally got a chance to come out here and work it with you and be, 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 be part of it. And I've heard so many great things about it over the years, so it's nice to be out here, being, being, being part of the event. My first time too. So that's right. What we're gonna do now is we got this, Bobby got this camera. The mic's gonna go down in the set T. And he's got an earpiece, so he can hear me talking. And we're just going to kind of get talk about some of that camaraderie that we were talking about. Mike, you're you're on right now. Uh, we've got the, the live feed on 13 right now, and he's got Josh Chambliss, who's uh, really bowled well so far. He's obviously got a, a triple this game. So Mike's got the live feed down in, in the set tee, and you can kind of see everybody high five and getting excited about it. But I think the the, the bowlers in general. You can see the scoring pace as the scores are. Mike brings us, brings us the scores. I think the bowlers in general could take a lesson from this. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I agree. I agree. It's a very positive attitude. I mean, it's uh, these people are, are, like I say, it's in their history. That they've, been, they've been taught to be disciplined and uh, get along. Well, you said it right out there. You said it right in your speech. The, way, the reason we live the lives that we live is because of the, this, these people. Absolutely. You know? absolutely. It's because of them. And without them, we don't have the freedom to do what we do. That we, do. we don't have the freedom to live the way we live. And in Las Vegas, a town like Las Vegas, doesn't stand here uh, without people, you know, our, our, our military and our support from the people. Very good point. Very good point. It's just like the Wounded Warriors program that Fan we're involved in. Yeah, it's fantastic. unbelievable. And uh, I, I've been approached, I would probably... 20 times in the three days I've been here about uh, when we're doing the next one and uh, uh, everybody's enthused about it and uh, looking forward to that. I believe it's going to be out in Tacoma. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, was, I was fortunate to, to work the last one. in. Uh, it was in uh, Maryland in Bethesda. Right. And uh, <clears throat> I got to meet some really great people, some great soldiers, and I uh, got to meet some really, really great people. And, um, you know, I've traveled a little bit more than most most bowlers around the world, so I uh, I get to see how lucky we are and how good we have it. And there's not enough people in our country that realize how great the United States of America is. And it has a lot to do with the military veterans and the, and the active and the and 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 the, and the retired because of their sacrifice. You know, people. I don't think people really appreciate it until you go somewhere and someone doesn't have running water. And they don't have warm food, uh, or, or they don't have. They can't take a shower. I think everybody. You know should, what I mean? One time in their life, I have the opportunity to go to a third world war, a third world country, and they would definitely appreciate what we have here in the United States. No doubt. And uh, that that program in Maryland, it's a wonderful program. Mike Sinek is involved in that. I worked uh, the two years prior to last year. Last year, I had a, uh, a conflict of. Uh, uh, dates, I was working the Space Olympics program, the, the National Space Olympics Bowling Tournament. You had the same weekend, but uh, this year there are different weekends, and I'll be uh, fortunate enough to work both programs. Well, that's perfect. Together. Anytime we can get Bob Hart on site at an event, you know, it's a, it's a special day. You know, you're a special friend of mine, obviously. I'm fortunate to have a personal relationship with you for 20 years now Absolutely. since I've come on board at Storm. And Watched how you do things, and you've been a mentor to me, and <clears throat> in this whole process, and uh, you know what people, you know the people that don't know. I mean, you're in seven Hall of Fames, maybe more than that. But you know, you, you were one of the greatest amateur bowlers there. For, you know, you're for a long time. People, you know, might have thought you were you were the best on the planet at that time. Well, I was, <clears> and right you were right there as an amateur. I was. Uh, you're right there. Uh, Chris Barnes, 20 years earlier. Uh, Associated myself with a great bowler, with Chris Barnes, but uh, they they voted the top amateur team in the country every year, and uh, there were several of us that was on a team every. Mike Berlin was always on it. Mike Samarja was on it. Myself was on it. Right. Had, uh, had some pretty good uh, bowlers that, for some reason or another, weren't able to or decided not to bowl on the pro tour, but. Fortunately, at that time, there was a lot of money out there for the amateur players. Sure. Uh, some tournaments paid, paying even more than the pro tournaments. You could make a good living bowling as an amateur back in the 
60s and 70s. And that's that's what a lot of us did. Of yeah, course. I did the same thing in my in my generation. Right, right. At the same time, and you know, because bowling's been in a state of flux, but I couldn't agree with you more. I just, it's just great to have you here. And I got to be honest with you, one of the best things for me in my life, watching my friend, you know, last year when we, we I flew out to Reno, watch you eclipse the hundred hundred thousand pin mark at the USBC Championships. It was just an honor and a privilege to to, to be, be be part of it and. Uh, See to, to see the people that you influence, and you know the the the, the inspiration you are to the people is well, just a, is just a huge that's... huge thing, especially coming from someone myself. I know I personally know you, <laughs> but I know how many people you personally influence in the sport of bowling. You know from all the things that have been said over the years. And you know well, Bob Hart, Bob Hart, Bob Hart. I have met one person in my life said one bad thing about Bob Hart. Hey Timmy, where are we at on the? What's cameras? his address? <laughs> well, we're down here right now. Hey, look at we got, look at they got us going up in the booth. Here's our setup, guys. Yeah, here we are. We appreciate Mike. Sorry, we got cut, kind of carried away there. We're gonna uh, we're gonna take it down over here to the main main event lanes. Mike, thanks for doing that. Come on up here and back and to, join us. Thanks, Mike. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to wipe the tears away. You got me a little emotional there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, my my man Bob but Hart. I appreciate that. I my appreciate man Bob your, Hart. your uh, remarks and. Uh, uh, I know one thing. You know how to get a party started. <laughs> <laughs> that's we'll a keep, private joke. That's a private joke, right, buddy? I've been fortunate enough to spend some have some good times with you outside the bowl and play some good rounds of golf and good laughs, and that's what it's all about. You know, that's what, what the Storm family's all yep, about. That's yep. what you know. We've been able to have a really unique relationships uh, that we've built within our within the infrastructure of this company. It's, well, it's I, something special. I, I remember uh, at the World Series this year, I, I went to lunch with Bob, and Bob said, well, there's only one place we're going, and that's Twin Peaks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never heard of such a place until I Bob. I had never heard of it before. <laughs> My God. Mike said, we're going to Twin Peaks for lunch, and when I got there, uh, the host just got us a table, and I Realize how the place got the name. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you had to give a dollar to the hostess when you walked in. <laughs> Funny you mentioned that because my boss, Mike, who is the PR boss, he then ended up taking me to Twin Peaks for lunch during the <laughs> during the uh, the I think we were working one of the another event in Vegas. I can't remember what it was, but uh, maybe the TNBA, I think it was, and uh, <laughs> we ended up going to Twin Peaks. Yeah. So you've influenced it already. Well done, thanks, well, Bobby. He's, he's they know him pretty well over there. I think he goes there a lot. <laughs> uh, Bob Hart at its finest right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Bob, they got to cut some questions on the chat here. They want to know, we ought to consider putting in a team next year. You, me, uh, Leah Trostel. Lee Trostel. Uh, uh, Lee Trostel. And then we, I'm sure we can scare up a couple of others. By golly, it sounds like a good idea. Lee Trostel's a... Uh, teammate of mine back in Atlanta. We bowled together on Wednesday nights in the league. Uh, he's an avid storm player. He has uh, every new ball that comes out. He makes it look good. I'll tell you what, very good bowler, great guy. Good. Tell him to buy two of them. Yeah, two he, of every new one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if he, the one that he likes the best, he usually does get another. <laughs> <laughs> We're just wrapping up game four here, guys, of the first squad, the 8 o'clock squad. And if you look to my right here on 25 and 26, you got two really big strings. At the, well, one just finished. But that looks like Thomas Wall Jr. down there. Guy from uh, back in the East Coast. Who? Thomas Wall Jr. Wall, down there yeah. on, on, on 26. He can, he's a player. Wow. He Somebody. might even have a couple PBA regional titles, but he's a player. Somebody's got the first six or first seven down there. That's Wall. He's got about yeah. to step up on the right lane right now. And oh, if he gets yeah. this next one, we may have to bring the auxiliary camera down there. I take a peek. But he's a good bowl. He's a heck of a player. Uh, he's no stranger to striking, that's for sure. Apparently. We just got the message. Uh, Lee, Lee's waiting for the Crux Pearl now. He just sent the message. In. He's waiting. That's the next ball he's getting. So you're on. Who's that? Lee Trostel. Can you hear him? No, he's just writing. He's writing in the chat. Okay. She's waiting on that Crocs Pearl now. Oh, we got yeah. The, He's got it ordered already. I do know that. <laughs> yeah. Got the front eight down there in 25 and 26. The Air Force, Air Force boys are still striking here. They're coming home. 
Incident, incidentally, Lee spent uh, spent his military days in a submarine, and he's a big dude. He's about 6'3", he weighs a, uh, a Lee, I'll tell him you weigh 210 even. <laughs> and uh, he spent a lot of years in the submarines. It's 6'3", uh, he's a big guy to be in a, su in oh, the, in yeah. a sub, that's oh, for sure. Yeah. No doubt about it. Wasn't a lot of swimming going on down there, was there? Boy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Bob, is it true when you walk into a room, the fish stop swimming? The fish stop swimming? Yeah. <laughs> Gee, well, I'll tell you what. I walked into a lot of bowling centers and looked up some fish. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Careful now, he said. Careful. Eh? He just said careful. Yeah. Be careful on that weight, weight, weight. I think it's more like 195, Lee. I've never met yeah, you. Yeah, 195. I think right. it's 195. It's got a one in front of that number. That's what I'm going to go with. So I hope that's okay. Hey, uh, Timmy, you want to cut to this camera for just a second? Yeah, we're going we'll to get ready to go. The scoreboard. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. We got, you're up. You're up and running. Yep, just the scoreboard just to show you. We've got the front eight here, uh, and he's going to be up here in just a moment. He's up right now. looks like Thomas. I'm pretty sure that's Thomas Wall down there. Yeah, it is. He's a heck of a bowler. He's got, a, he's got a brother. It's also good. John, I think his name's John. If it's not, Tom and John are pretty common names anyway, so we should go with that anyway. Should be okay with those. Doesn't look like he shoots many spares. No, <laughs> not this game. <laughs> you know our good friend Jimmy Schroeder, who's in the Hall of Fame also. Mm -hmm. I think we got a ball pins. return or something down here if you want to click off for now. Ball return? Okay, we're going to go back to the main, main pair over here. Let me know when you're back up and running, when you think he's ready. I've got you ready to go, so. A lot happening, the next squad's coming in right behind these guys. I'm pretty sure, I don't think they re-oil, Bob. I think they're. No, they do. Oh, Wendy oh. just told me they do. Okay, so they're gonna re-oil, so. We're gonna have a little bit about, probably about a 40 minute break while they oil the lanes. Maybe a little bit longer. If they got two machines going, we'll see, what, see how it goes. But it uh, looks like you're back up, and we're going we're gonna to move over to Mike Flanagan down there in the set tee, 25 and 26. We're going to have Bob Hart call this ninth frame. Take it away, Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are, beautiful Orleans, home of a military national tournament. Having Mr. Wall going for number nine. Looks real cool, calm, and collected. Very smooth bowler. Nice release, a lot of revs out and oh, little, little light, little late. Sent 10 pin. Looked pretty good going down the lane. It just got there a little quick. I agree. Looks like that's it, Mike. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to move back over here to the uh, to the main event, main event pair uh, where we've been streaming the whole time here on 17, 18, 19, 20. I want to thank Mike for that camera angle down, down, in the, down in the trenches there is uh, Thomas Wall. Junior's bid for 300 comes up a little bit short with the flat 10. In the booth here, the Hall of Famer, USBC, ABC, DEF, GRAHIK, say Elemental P. <laughs> Every Hall of Fame there is. Bob Hart, it's an honor to be here. Personal friend, work colleague, and uh, yeah, just uh, nice to have Bobby up in the up in the booth here. This is his deal. You know, he's uh, was that he was uh, military. And uh, he's got a personal connection to these people. He knows, he's no, he knows what it's like to walk in their shoes. So uh, it's always nice when you have somebody that has, been, has experienced something that they've experienced so they can relate. Anytime you can relate to people, communication is so much easier, right? Wouldn't well, you agree? You know what? That's, all, that's what it's all about. Communication with people is what makes this life worthwhile. And uh, you mentioned our friendship, Tim. You know, I respect you and uh, have always respected our friendship and uh, it has gone back a long way yep and i'm a lucky it's guy always been nice always been nice to be with you and uh, and of course your mom i know your mom real well and yep. uh, she's a wonderful gal a lot of fun she knows how to handle those slot machines too <laughs> buddy, i'll tell you got a strong right hand when you yeah. just have to pull pull the handle i can't wait to tell her when she hears that it'll be great <laughs> that'll be fantastic yeah Came to my wedding. Bob came to my wedding, gave us a special gift. My wife had it on the other day. Uh -oh. His and her robes. Yep, that's, that's why, right. That's why I have a daughter, because yep. of you. 
What, you took the robes off? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to be, as, as, as Lee said, we got to be careful now. But uh, wrapping up the last game here, guys, just uh, finishing up here. <coughs> Some good scores out there. I think Dick Baker had 10.30 for, for his four-game ball. I'll tell you ball. what, he's, he's quite a bowler. There's Something no else, doubt about he? it. He's a really, really good bowler. Very, very practiced. He bowls uh, continuously. He and Ron Winger here in uh, Las Vegas are as good as any of them. Ron Winger I saw on the concourse here a minute ago. And, of course, Ron and I uh, and Dick bowled on the senior tour together. And, and uh, Ron, Ron lives here, and uh, we communicated weekly at least once a week we talk to each other and get together when we're out here so Ron Winger's a heck of a bowler both well, 300 on TV I'll tell you, fantastic Ron, he's 74 years old and he still averaged last year he had the highest average in Nevada averaged 240 and two houses last year at, at, at age 73 this is impressive sometimes you just have it you know what I mean some people just have it. You know, a lot of people don't realize how good Ron Winger was. When Ron Winger was a teenager, he and a fellow by the name of Brooms, Grooms, okay. yeah, they uh, lost the national doubles championship to Ray Bluth and Dick Weber and went right down to the 10th frame. And they were both teenagers. Yeah, and that's, I mean, you talk were, about two of the greats of all time phenoms. with Bluth and Weber, yeah. And uh, Bo Burton told me uh, the finest young bowler he ever knew was Ron Winger. He said when Ron Winger was a, a teenager, he was as good as anybody in the world. You know, he made the Masters, the regular uh, USBC Masters match play just a couple of years ago. Right. Just a couple of years oh, ago, well into his 60s. So, yep. yeah, it's, um, and we're referencing, uh, not to get off the subject, Dick Baker, Ron Wingers, some of the greats of the game that at their age are still able to play. That's the beauty of this sport. You can play it at any age, and you see a lot of different ages out here uh, with the active and, uh, you know, the, the, the retired. And they're just get, having a go. It's, it's, what it's, all, it's what it's all about. Well, they're, they're like I say, well-practiced bowlers. They're, uh, they're class bowlers. They came from an era when bowling was a classy thing to do. Right. And not, not that it still isn't, but it was throughout the game of bowling years ago. I mean... The team bowling, uh, everybody was in uniform. They had matching trousers and shirts and, and sweaters to go outside with. And, right. And uh, uh, team era was a great time to bowl, the beer, the beer teams. And I know when, when I bowled on the Strohs team, we had the best uniforms. You changed into paddocks, and it matter, was really a wonderful time. As a matter of fact, that uniform, I believe the natural, which is a storm, our first urethane ball we released a couple of years ago, the the advertisement was you, and I believe it was in your Stroh's uniform, throwing the shot. Was that was that was that? That's the, correct. Yeah. That was an action. That was an <laughs> action actual shot. shot. And when they did the flyer on it, they took the Stroh's off it storm. And there and put storm on yeah. there. I must <laughs> had fifty people. I'd say. Gee, that was back in the 70s. They didn't make the Storm Bowling Balls then. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, guys, that's going to wrap up our, our squad here. We'll be back for the 12 o'clock squad. We'll be able to get a chance to get out of here for a few minutes and go grab some food and whatnot. But I uh, want to thank everybody for, for watching. And, of course, it'll all be archived on our YouTube channel. Bobby, pleasure having you in the booth. And, Timmy, we'll be working together some more. Bob, make Mike, sure you stop I, back I by. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's always nice to spend a little time chatting with you guys. Of and, Timmy, uh, well, like we always already stated, we've been friends for a long, long time. And uh, uh, every time we get together, it's going to be it's a new experience. Yeah. we got so, 20 more years. I hope so. <laughs> Thanks, least. guys. Hey, so that's going to do it for right now, 8 a.m. squad here. We're just getting underway. More team event coming up here this afternoon from New Orleans at the Military Championships 2015. Thanks. Thanks. Good job, Mike. Thank you.